requirements of the open meeting law, please be advised that this meeting is being audio video recorded. The agenda lists all the topics which may be discussed at the meeting and are those reasonably anticipated by the chair. Votes may be taken as a result of these discussions. Not all items listed may in fact be discussed and other items not listed may also be brought up for the discussion to the extent permitted by the open meeting law. Uh, do we have any announcements from the commission? Uh, I would like to send out condolences. Our um, past administrative assistant passed away last week, Jan Carrier. Uh, I just want to give our condolences to her family and friends. Uh, she will be missed. Uh, any public comments? No public comment. Any yeah, public I, comment I, I from the uh, public? Yes. <clears throat> My grandson's going to be a big brother in March. End of oh, public nice. comment. <laughs> yeah, hey. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, at this point, we will enter into executive session under Mass General Law Chapter 39, Section 23B. An executive session will be held with the commission reconvening back into public session following the session. This is to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the government's bargaining or litigation position. 101 Pleasant Street, uh, executive session, which will be right after that one to consider the purchase exchange taking lease or value of real property if such discussions may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the governmental body uh, 61a release 250 howard street so with that i'll take a roll call vote to enter executive session richard bursch aye todd dwyer aye jack rabbit aye katie childs aye all right we will enter into executive session and up there
He's in Iceland, yeah. Iceland. <laughs> It, oh, go. it's worth it. It's such a worth it. It's very expensive. Worth it. Yeah. Well, no, you get them on Groupon rates, for like six hundred bucks a person, and uh, five days hotel. Matt just snuck off. Deal. Okay. The woman that was sitting in front, I forget her name. I know it, but I forget it. It's popular. They get a lot of meat in there. Yeah. 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 Champion, champion, champion. Yeah. Some of his points. Yeah. 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 That one I have, the new plants that he just got, sending them to deep work. He was supposed to be here, uh, Harrison, to go. He wasn't expecting any approval. He just wanted to go over the plants, but I mean, he may show up later. Mm -hmm. oh, we will call the uh, September 18th meeting of Conservation Commission back in the public session. And we will move forward with our first hearing. Continue from previous meeting, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40 is amended. And Section 239 of the Lunenburg General Bylaw. John Harrison has filed a notice of intent for construction of a single family dwelling and grading to accommodate a septic system at 915 Northfield Road. Is anybody here for 915 Northfield Road? All right, seeing none, I know he is in the process of filing still with the EP. I'll accept the motion to continue to October 2nd. So moved. So moved. Second. A motion and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Recess? Uh, well, we we'll motion to continue and we can reopen it back up. Yeah. That's fine. To the second. Okay. Who motion? All uh, right. Jack motion, Todd second. And it was unanimous. All right, moving forward, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40 is amended, and Section 239 of Lunenburg General Bylaw. Uh, Lunenburg Department of Public Works has filed a notice of intent for the placement of culverts at Sunset Lane and Northfield Road. Do we have anybody here from DEP? From DPW? No, um, DEP hasn't given the number yet. Okay. At this point, I will accept the motion to continue to October 2nd. So moved. Second. A motion a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Okay, moving forward. Pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40 is amended in Section 239 of Lunenburg General Bylaw. Robert G. Evans has filed a notice of intent for installation of a retaining wall within flood plain at 4 Sunset Lane. I believe they have requested a continuance. Um, Mr. Chairman, yes. we have a letter into the record that was sent by GPR requesting a continuance. I also have in the record in the folder a communication from the abutter, Andrew Storm, who says he still hasn't heard anything from the neighbor. So at this point, until things change, he's objecting to the proposal right now. Okay. So my recommendation is continue to the October 2nd meeting. All right. Thank you very much. So I'll accept the motion to continue till October 2nd. So moved. Second. Yeah. Motion and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40 is amended in Section 239 of the Lunenburg General Bylaw. Greco Alfonso has filed a notice of intent for mediation of riverfront and buffer zone at 260 for Lula Road, Lunenburg, and 100 Summer Street, Lunenburg. Same thing. The, um, the applicant's representative, Mr. Hannigan, is still negotiating with the Fitchburg Redevelopment Authority over a purchase of that particular parcel. Mm -hmm. 
So they were meeting with the redevelopment authority actually subsequent to our meeting, so they would have no ability to be able to tell us a result. So they're asking to continue to the October 2nd. I believe you and I discussed that previously. Yep. All right. But I did meet with them. Mm -hmm. um, they do have a, the, the notice of intent is for remediation of the entire site and usage of pre-existing portions of the site that were there prior to the Rivers Act, which they have a complete catalog and aerial photo of. Yeah. Um, they have numbers, um, they have riverfront numbers, they have remedial numbers. It's actually a decent looking plan. I think you guys would be well pleased, but they need that one key piece, which is the deal with the redevelopment authority to make it happen. Okay. The uh, comment I did receive from DEP on that was, there was no action apparently filed for in Lemonster. So there, because a little bit does go into Lemonster, they're requiring the applicant to file an RDA or an NOI in Lemonster as well. Mm -hmm. I've spoken to my counterpart in Lemonster and she's gonna work that out with her permission there. All right. Uh, so at this point then, I'll accept the motion to continue to October 2nd. So moved. Second. Motion and second, any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 It was on here. It's on my. Is it on? It was right above um, Summer Street. It's right here. Oh, okay, went by. Yep, perfect. <laughs> All right, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40 is amended in the Section 239 of the Lunaburg General Bylaw. Paul Stone and Gravel has filed a notice of intent for grading and installation of the culvert at 131, 133, Lemister Shirley Road. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Where are we going to have the easel set? Um, yeah, there you go. Probably right there. Right at the base of the stairs, Patrick. Yeah. Yeah. This was under contuned adherence. Contuned? Contuned. Contuned adherence. <laughs> Busy, uh, October 7th. Okay, good evening. For the record, my name is Patrick McCarty. <laughs> my company is McCarty Engineering in Lovester, and we are here tonight on behalf of PSG Realty 393-435 LLC, the applicant who is uh, Powell Stone and Gravel for their property at 131 through 133 Lovester Shirley Road. Uh, Brian Marchetti that works for me had previously presented this plan to the commission at the last meeting. And uh, since that time, he's worked through some comments with DEP and uh, Echotech, our consultant. And the original notice of intent was submitted back in July of this year. Uh, on August 28th, 2019, Echotech, our wetland consultant, submitted a memo to the commission outlining the reasoning and design of the proposed culvert the 24-inch culvert that's going to connect the wetland series here to the wetland in the front. Um, careful attention was paid to setting the elevation of that culvert so it doesn't uh, drain the existing wetland. So it's set above the water level of that. It's, and it's to maintain a hydraulic connection that was historically between those two wetland series. So that was submitted back on August uh, 28th. We then submitted on August 30th, uh, at the request of the commission, revised riverfront area calculations that did a comparison to the proposed plan that's here to the original approved plan that was prepared for Ross Associates uh, when Powell was originally gonna build a home and facility on the property. This design results in a 28% reduction in pervious area. Um, which is a 3% decrease from the pre-2011 riverfront area uh, that was permitted by Ross, and everybody should have a copy of that memo. We then submitted on September 10th a narrative to um, demonstrate why the project would be considered redevelopment. We submitted this also to the DEP reviewer, and he was satisfied with the reasoning behind why this qualifies as a redevelopment project. And then the last submission was uh, September 12th, which was an infiltration basin sizing 
calculations for the expansion of the infiltration basin here. So the plan has this uh, gravel area here that's being proposed with some off-grading to store hardscape products. That's where the existing brick and stone and everything is stored now on pallets. We have an expansion of a large flat area here to be able to store hay uh, for sale. We have the mulch area here, and there's a berm that's now proposed that stays outside of the 30-foot no-touch, continues all the way across so that the runoff comes here, hits the berm, and then comes into this newly reshaped infiltration basin before ultimately discharging to the resource area. Um, I believe that Brian went through everything in detail. Happy to answer any more questions, but according to him, those are the three touch points to come back to this evening. Is Right. I, I just do, I have a couple quick ones. The first one is the um, the reshaped or resized detention basin. Yes. Is it is the same size just deepened? It, it's very hard to tell. Unfortunately, we got the eight and a half by 11 size, so uh, that was about the size of a quarter. Yeah, it's deepened and it's, it's stretched in length. A okay, bit so well. it did increase in length a bit? Yep. And okay. The, um, the September 12th memo that was provided mm -hmm. has the existing um, existing calculations from Ross for existing and proposed peak flow. Yeah. Has the Ross's plan as Exhibit A, so that we we analyze the same design points that they did when resizing mm -hmm. upon uh, their proposed watershed protection watershed um, area plan. A copy of their drainage calculations and then the same points of analysis that they use, we use, so that we could compare the two to make sure that the pond was size adequate. Okay, yeah, because I did, I did read through the, that narrative and some of the stormwater calcs and saw that they had increased the, um, the overall area that was running into it, so, yep. which was a concern when I brought it up to Brian, so yes. I'm glad that he was able to do that and resize it properly. Yes. So it just didn't overflow the yep. potential so now, it's, now, it's, now it's properly sized to control the runoff. That's Perfect. Right. Uh, second question I had was in reviewing, unfortunately the letter was very, very general from Ecotech, and pre-construction conditions had the overland flow from the wetland at about, um, I think it was 683 or 373 three was the initial overland flow. And you've got the new connection 18 inches lower than yeah. the original overland flow. 371 on the high side, 369 yep. and a half. The existing grade of the wetland is 371 and it's draining down in this direction, mm -hmm. 370 and then 369, uh, 368. So the yep. ponded area would be over here. This is a 372 existing contour, so that would be, that would put the invert above that. Okay. No. Ponded area so that we're not draining that, but in a large storm event, if it does no. surge up, it'll hit the culvert and come across okay. it. And again, unfortunately, I only have the small version, but the pre construction had the that flow, that choke point at 373. The, the pre construction the, being like the, pre, the Ross plan? Yeah, the 2011 prior. And I think it's, it's in the, um, the wetland report. Not the wetland report, but in the stormwater report. Yeah, it's probably around three, well, there's a 373 that goes one way and a 373 that goes the other right. way. So, so it's somewhere between below 372 three, and 373 three. was where that was. Right. And most of the wetland um, delineation was 373 originally. I just want to make sure when by dropping that down below the original elevation, we're not going to drain it back out again. No, I know that was the whole intention of this, and I know Scott and Brian, Scott from Echotech and Brian from my office went back and forth on okay. that to specifically pick the inverts here. Okay, so we'll, I, then I would just make sure that we have a special condition in there that the, the wetland sizing will remain no bigger, no smaller. I mean, if it gets bigger, then we can readjust it, but if it gets smaller, we'll have to readjust it as okay. well. So sure. just to make sure. We can monitor, yeah, monitor that. Yep, yeah, just in looking at it, I mean, we've, we've lost a foot and a half of storage capacity in there for it one, 371 compared to 373. So, mm -hmm. And the third thing, in looking at the plan, we had instructed Brian that all of the 30-foot disturbance was to be remediated. So on the northwest portion there, yep. Yeah, right there. Yep. Okay. 
Yeah, we had taken a poll, a unanimous poll, that uh, all of that should be. Okay, so that area there. Yep. Outside of there. Okay. So those are my. Those are the only questions I had on the uh, the revisions. Okay. Would the commission be okay with a, a condition that we submit a revised plan that pulls that limit of work, shows that area being restored, or do you want us to come back? Um, we did get a DEP number, so it would be at the commission's discretion. Okay. We can see if we get a motion for that. Okay. So those are my questions. Any other uh, commission questions? Culver Hart took care of. The culvert pipe is taken care of, so I'm happy. Yeah, we'll just cover it. To, the, the wetland itself will stay as it's currently set. sized, right? Because we don't we don't want it to continue to grow. That's why we rec recommended putting in the uh, connection again, <coughs> but we don't want to shrink it out either. So sure, understood. Yep. So, any questions, Katie? Any questions from the public on 131, 133, Lemister Shirley Road? <coughs> it's nice that they're not here for anyone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, at that point, I guess I'll accept a motion with the special conditions that the wetland will remain in state in perpetuity and that we'll receive an update prior to the issue, I guess prior to the issuance of the um, order of conditions, an updated plan showing remediation inside the entire 30 foot. I'll make that motion. Okay, I'll move a motion and a second. Second. Any other discussion? You good with that, Patrick? Yes, thank okay. you very much. All right. Mm -hmm. um, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's quick. Have a good night. All right, moving forward, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, as amended in the Lunenburg Wetland Protection Regulation, Section 335. Hmm. And I'm just going to say Section 239, just to be on the safe side. 239 is the bylaw, 335 is the regulation. Ah. Has filed a request for determination at 31 Round Road for the repair of a boat ramp. Sean. Addition of sand to an existing beach, not to expand. Construction of retaining wall greater than 50 feet from Lake Shirley and a patio also <coughs> 50 feet away from the lake, but within the buffer zone. Oh, have a seat. Sure. If you can describe to us what you're looking to do. I'm looking to construct a retaining wall and a, um, a patio next to a retaining wall. Um, that was part of the project. And then uh, there's kind of an existing boat ramp there. And I want to pick up the chair. Okay. Uh, not, at, not at this point, they're not. They should be on the cloud anyway. Okay, they are? Yep. All right. I don't want to repair that boat ramp so I can make it accessible to Mm -hmm. And uh, there's an existing beach there as well. And I just wanted to put some fresh wind on. Sure. All right, just give me a second. Unfortunately, sure. none of the diagrams are in the application. Okay. We got a ditch in these stores. We, got, we haven't digitally stored, uh, so that's the, yeah, just looking to the digital folder. Today. 
Everything's been really great. Today. Sixty people on the phone. My plan is coming out. I can't pick the name for you. I can't either. <laughs> You do if you if you could bring it just to Yeah, none of my folders are opening up at all. You said it was the last page, man. There we go. Pass that down. Did you able to get it open, Katie? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. It look like I saw it before. You did it. Get it open. <laughs> so, how much sand are you looking to add to the beach? Um, well, the beach is only by thirty. Yep. I'm gonna. Kind of stir up the sand that's there, mm -hmm. and then probably put another inch or so on top of it. So a 20 by 30, so 600 square feet. So an inch, you're looking at like two yard, yeah. two tons, three tons. So yeah. not okay. Mm -hmm. So okay, two tons, three yards. Sand will be added. Um, then we had you were working on the patio. Yep. Okay, the boat ramp. The, you don't happen to have any pictures of the boat ramp? I don't have Okay. What, what is the um, the extent of the construction going to be for the... The boat ramp goes down and then it like drops off about 8 to 10 inches down from the box. Mm -hmm. And then you can kind of pull that back so that we can get through the transition totally. Okay. Matt, have you been out to the site? Yeah, actually, me, Jack, and Carl were out over okay. the weekend. Yeah. The only thing we had asked was he has a... Um, a stone retaining wall mm -hmm. between the 30 and the 50 that's pre-existing. Yep. It's in really good condition. And he has a few trees over by the patio section, the lower patio, mm -hmm. um, that should be added to the plan just to have it memorialized. Okay. So that if you ever have to come back and repair the wall, mm -hmm. well, you need to cut the trees down because they're pretty big. So yep. that's they, they look healthy, but yep. Yep. give them 10 years, that could change. Okay. So if you need to cut them down, it, we have it memorialized as that it was pre-existing. Okay. Do you know what I'm saying? Sure, sure. Because yeah. a lot of this stuff, if it's in the 30-foot zone, mm -hmm. they only allow for repair of existing. So if you have this memorialized as to where it is, mm -hmm. it, sh it, it you have it on paper with us showing that it's pre-existing. Okay. Right. It's, it's more of a housekeeping item sure, than it sure. is affecting your project, but it should yeah. be on there. Okay. And as far as the, um, the grading needed for the boat ramp, mm -hmm. What was your observation on site, Matt? There really isn't any grading that's going to be needed for the boat ramp. It's, yeah. it's already there, essentially. It just started growing over. Okay. Is it just a, a natural ground that, that has been leveled? And yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Any, so, any intention of putting pavers or anything like that, like permeable pavers or something? To make I it wasn't it? playing on that. Okay. Um, but there is existing vegetation growing up in it, so it's not a um, an erosion hazard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah, you know, I didn't have a chance to go out. There is a, and again, I didn't take a shot of where the boat ramp of the New Orleans is going to sit. This is your buddy. Your son did, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your son did a beautiful job. <laughs> and so one of the questions that, that had arisen was that these are beautiful, those are totally beautiful trees. Really, congratulations. <laughs> is that you were going to be actually putting that patio inside the 50 foot? Yeah. And are those totally permeable? Is it? Is it? They're, they're, they're going to be landscape -based. So they're not going to be. The water's not going to be Okay. So the question is, do we need to put that that close? Can we give some more grass space? Because usually we try to. To be quite it. honest with you, I was actually thinking about omitting that. This lower patio. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And that walkway. Mm -hmm. And just doing the top. Okay, to yeah. that. which would eliminate your concerns yeah, and right. our concerns it's inside the 50 area. foot. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's trees are gorgeous. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and then the, the wall you're talking about is rebuilding this area around the... Uh, no, no, the no. retaining wall that I want to build will come off the actual back of the house. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, that's right. It's completely out of the 50 foot. Okay. It's out of the 100 foot. It's yeah, it is. Yeah. 
You're right. And so, so we'll off of that, I also tie into the right side of Mr. the Chair. Yeah. What? If I may, really quick. Now, when, are you looking, you're done? when are you looking to do the work? Um, maybe this fall. Okay. Uh, springtime. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The question I've just been dying to ask, do you have access to erosion protection supplies yeah. if you need them? <laughs> yeah, I know, okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, at this point, I, I would recommend that perhaps we upgrade the, where you're not looking to do it tomorrow. Right. We get everything memorialized on the plan and documented. Okay. So we, we, as Matt recommended, the trees, the existing wall, uh, removing the walkway and the lower patio that you were looking to do mm -hmm. and taking um, mark in wherever the wall you're looking to build okay and that I way there, that in there but you did yeah it's probably hard to oh see i do it. see it okay it's so it is within 100 small, foot so so if you can right now you have the water's edge of 30 foot the 50 foot if we can have the 100 foot buffer line drawn in as well okay because yeah, everything you're probably just inside yeah everything yeah, inside yeah, the I, think it's, I think it's 96 feet from that yeah he's okay. everything is just inside yeah. the buffer zone. yep yep so and get the 100 foot drawn in on mm -hmm. there so well, if you can maybe take and um, just blow up this part of it okay before you redraw it out sure sure and then mark everything on there okay so and the only other thing i would ask if you're only looking for a couple yards of sand yeah mark that on here okay replenish with two yards of sand okay so but other than that it, it, it's permittable once we get all of the, the documentation proper okay then we'll have it as a record in perpetuity so okay so you draw the trees on there the walls yep draw the trees the walls the and the 100, 100 foot, foot buffer. buffer yep and the sand that you're going to be adding mm -hmm. and the only other thing is depending on I, when you're out there do we need erosion protection honestly no okay it's it's a it's a big yard it's a flat area i just mm -hmm. don't Okay. So, Mr. Chairman? Mr. Rabbit? Uh, Matt, I don't know if you had a chance to look, but it's not exactly a flat area. Okay. So, uh, at this point, if, put if in erosion see. protection at the 50 foot. Yeah. Where are we talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's the easiest it's way. The where, terraced where area, if he's bringing it anyway. back yeah. across. Yeah. 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 Just throw down a, a, a wobble. Yeah. 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 Uh, no, I'm talking about the, when he's putting the road, a little bit of a road in. Oh, you mean that? Down, you mean uh, the ball ramp? Well, yeah, yeah. You can use erosion protection of the patio. No, the patio yeah, the is too area. far back. We wouldn't worry about that. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Where were you looking to have erosion protection on the? On the well, he basically he's going to take and create a small road down to the boat ramp area, mm -hmm. and you're going to be you have to dig something because it drops mm -hmm. off like mm -hmm. that. So I'm just thinking, some probably a small deep. line at the water's edge would work. Yeah. Okay. okay. Just something small. Yeah. All right. I can do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so at this point, um, if you can work with Matt and get us an upgraded uh, plan, plan. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah, that would be great. Yeah. So, and the only thing we ask on revisions, sign and date it and sure. submit it. So, yeah. Yeah. for the final time. Mm -hmm. All right. No, I think we you. Thank you. Yeah. Tell you, son, thank you. He was no, a great no, host. He really was. Have it ready for the second? Uh, do you think you have it ready for the second? Um, yeah, I have it ready for the second. Okay. All right, nope. Katie, any questions? Nope. Good. Any questions from the public on 31 Round Road? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, I'll accept the motion to continue to October 2nd. So moved. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Okay, we'll see you back on October 2nd. Great. And we, I did stick, Matt had made a couple copies, so there is one in the file now. So okay. we're all set and for that. Just, be drawn just, like that right? just like that, if you have the original, mm -hmm. like I say, just blow up that section. Yeah, cool. this section of it here, and then it's just a little bigger, a little easier. All right, perfect. So, perfect. Thank Thanks. you very much. Okay, thank you. <coughs> all right, moving forward. Pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, as amended, and Little Bear Wetland Protection Section Regulation Section 335, call up uh, Helbedel. 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 file a request for determination at 127 Pleasant Street for a pair of a driveway within the buffer zone. Hi. Hello. Good evening. I have a seat. So your neighbor's been doing a little activity out back there, huh? Yes, he has. <laughs> All right. All right, 
if you want to give us a quick description of what you're looking to do. So most of the work is done, as you know. Mm -hmm. um, part of the quarters of my driveway was on my abutters land. So the objective is just to get my driveway on my land. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yes, I do remember the it was part of, it was right on the property line. Yes. Okay. With the 101. Yes. Okay. So it overlapped about probably five to ten feet. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you've taken the wall out and you're moving the driveway and everything over over to it, closer to the house, so it's off of the property line. Correct. Itself. Okay. Um, are you looking to try to get that finished up this fall? Ideally, yes. Okay. Um, I've been out there. The only thing I would just recommend quick, just in case we start to get rain, is um, a line of hay bales right on the property line. On my property line? Yes. Or? Uh, right on the line between your property and 101. Okay. So, because okay. there is a bunch of water that continues to run and flow down through there. So, if you get stone dust or anything like that, we don't want it flowing down and then into that little pond okay. eventually. So, okay. that would be my only suggestion out in there. And I don't know if anybody else had a chance to take a look I, at it. I, I did, Mr. Oh, Chairman. You did? Uh, yeah. Okay. And uh, actually, I'm surprised. It's fine. It really is. You've disassembled your wall already. You've stacked up the rocks beautifully. You're doing <laughs> and, and I'm not really seeing much of an, an opportunity for it to even carry mm -hmm. anywhere, but you don't want to put it on your neighbor's property. Sure. So that was, but you know, I, I had no problem with it at all. Okay. Yeah, I think a negative so haven would be appropriate. Okay. Yeah. Chairman, hay bales or straw wattles. Yes. Yep. 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 Some yep. erosion protection yep. and just give them adequate call when you What's get them. The straw wattles are, they, they come in rolls, so they're easier to lay out. Lay well, out. It's okay. like a knitted tube of hay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And usually get them in 25 or 30 foot rolls and just roll them out with a couple stakes. Mm -hmm. And then okay. when you get those in place, just give Matt a call. Okay. So you just come and proof it. Okay. And then you can get to work on the driveway and the wall. Mm -hmm. Katie, any questions? Nope. Okay. Right. Any other questions from the public on 127 Pleasant Street? All right, seeing none, I'll accept a motion for a negative determination. So move with the caveat, with the added um, condition of the wattles or hay bale erosion protection along the property line. Mm -hmm. So move with that condition. Mm -hmm. Motion and a second. Any other discussion? Just that a negative determination is a good thing. It means you won't, you're not negatively impacting everything. Okay. So that's okay. a good thing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you had a look. Oh my God. Sorry. Oh. Like, what does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> but it means your project as designed will not impact the wetland. Okay. So, right. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. So I have a motion and a second of discussion. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All right. You're all set. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank now, you. once you get the waddles, um, let me know you can start, Colin, so I get them as soon as possible. Sure. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you, you Mr. Know. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, before we dismiss that hearing totally, can we do a motion to um, lift the enforcement order? Yes. I will accept the motion to lift the enforcement order at 127 Pleasant Street. So moved. Second. Second, any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 That previous enforcement order, what we do is we just canceled it out. Oh, so the cease and desist is, is done. Yes. It's out. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, moving forward, pursuant to Master General Law Chapter 131, Section 40 is amended in Lunenburg Wetland Regulation Section 1335. Susan Delisle has requested, has filed a request for determination at 235 Island Road for removal of six trees, addition of understory plantings, and removal of hazardous standing deadwood, removal of 500 square feet of impervious surface, and replacement of 220 square feet of impervious surface. The remainder to be replaced with pervious surface. Mr. Chairman, the applicant requested a continuance due to some added detail that needed to be put on the plans. Okay. To October 2nd. Okay. And just as a disclosure, I believe my brother, owner of Lakeview Landscaping, is helping design and do the work. But as there is, I am needed for a quorum, I will vote for the continuance. 
So at this point, I'll accept a motion to continue to October 2nd. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40 is amended. And what on regulation section 335, the town of Lunenburg and the Lake Shirley Improvement Corp has filed a notice of intent for approval of a lake management program for Lake Shirley. Get this stuff on your way. Okay. This stuff is yours. I just I'm here just to introduce our consultant. This is Lee Gender. She will be handling the NOI on behalf of Lake Shirley Recruiting Corporation. And I just want to welcome her to you and hope for great success. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Good evening. Uh, my name is Wendy Gendron, and I am an aquatic ecologist. I'm a certified lake manager through the Lake Management Association, somewhat equivalent to a PE um, in terms of what we do in limnology. We go through rigorous schooling as well as, um, you know, we get evaluated by our peers, and then we have to generate continuing education units to maintain that CLM. Um, I own and operate a company called Aquatic Restoration Consulting. I've been doing uh, lake and watershed restoration management uh, for about 23 years. Uh, and, and I've just recently been involved with the Lake Shirley Improvement Corps in the last couple of years. Uh, originally, they had hired me to help train some volunteers to start up their volunteer monitoring program. And then they had requested that uh, I assist them with a notice of intent for the lake management of vegetation through the use of aquatic herbicides, algicides, and the winter water level drawdown. So I presume you, you have all looked through the, the notice of intent application. During that time, we also uh, presented to the Board of Selectmen to get their signature on the um, notice of intent forms. At that time, a board member read into the record some comments from the commission. I understand that this wasn't directed necessarily to the applicant or myself or the company, but I thought it would be a decent use of the time tonight to go over some of your concerns and address them. Uh, I have prepared a statement for all of the concerns, but I, I really think it's best to focus on um, the ones that are, that are entitled concerns for the LSIC aquatic aquatic management application. So if you don't have yeah, okay. if you don't have any objections, uh, I'd like to proceed with that. I'll read the statement or question, and then I'll, my response I'll read, and then we can open it up. I'm, I'm here. I'm hope, hopeful that we can have a dialogue, and um, you know really address any of your questions tonight, or if it, if, if there is a continuance to to follow up. So um, anything before I begin? Uh, Matt, you got a chance to send those that out to everybody. I don't think so. I don't know. Yeah, they should be on the um, it's on the cloud. It's on the cloud. It's on the cloud. And again, thank you for the time you spent with Matt and I on Tuesday. Yeah, no it was problem. definitely helpful. Agreed. Hopefully it clarified it on both sides. It did. Really Very much so. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, so I have to put my cheaters on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to photocopy those for everybody. Great. All right, so the first comment or question was the main interest of the Wetland Protection Act being cited as the reason for the management activity is wildlife and fisheries habitat restoration. Um, the Mass DEP presumes that elimination or reduction in non-native plants is likely to improve wildlife habitat and serves as restoration. These activities are therefore eligible for permitting under a limited ecological restoration project and are not subject to general performance standards. Um, the first uh, A under item number one is there are no data on the current state of the habitat areas. Uh, the entire lake has been surveyed for nuisance aquatic vegetation and the most recent survey was provided in the existing conditions section. Uh, under B, there is no plans on what needs to be addressed in the habitat area. The response, nuisance aquatic veg vegetation and prevention of algal blooms is a lake, is lake wide is, is required, so it's not a specific area or two. Um, there's no specific description on how any activities will protect the habitat. 
The response is several sections of the project description in attachment B describe the techniques and how reduction of nuisance of vegetation will restore habitat. The MAS DEP again presumes the elimination or reduction of non-native plants as, as restoration. Under D, there is no plan on how to determine if this activity is having a positive or negative effect. Response, annual monitoring of aquatic, of aquatic vegetation and water quality is planned. The section describing the reporting can be expanded to ensure there is a dis discussion on observed changes over time and a qualitative discussion of success for each technique. The annual report can also include a brief discussion on whether the program needs adjustment based on the data collected. Uh, I think that was a, a major concern that there was no real um, description in the NOI on how we we're going to define success or uh, so uh, I'm proposing that in the annual report that that information will be provided. So I'm going to open up the first comment, um, the main interest of the Wetland Protection Act and all the sub items open for discussion if you guys want to discuss any of those items. If not, I can move on. Okay, so you're going to uh, propose some um, goals for the project as to the protection of the wildlife and fisheries habitat and a restoration goal. So, and I know when we had talked briefly, um, other lakes tend to use, at least have some percentage cover and percentage plant material as a target right. to maintain. So it's, it's a, that's a difficult thing to really quantify. Mm -hmm. You know, this is um, biology, and it's not physics or engineering where you plug something into a formula and it spits out a 41 is bad and a 40 is good. Um, this will take some, some thinking and some time. I'm not sure we're going to come up with a quantitative, but certainly a qualitative description. In terms of the Wetland Protection Act, um, they essentially state that any reduction in non-natives is considered uh, restoration, and they don't necessarily have a numerical target so to speak, yep. but um, I think it's reasonable to have a discussion and you'll see in my response to a couple of the things that I am going to suggest that if we can have some work, a workshop perhaps of someone from the commission, uh, someone from, uh, as a certified applicator uh, to, and myself and someone from the LSIC to sit down and, and have those type of discussions. Okay. Yeah, and one of the other points that I was concerned with in the, the habitat area was, and we had talked about it in the length, was the, um, the slow elimination of the native species, right. at least at the contact points. Yep. So we're looking at the same points every year, and every year it seems like we're finding less and less and less native plants. Yes. So. And, for the, and for the board's benefit, and, and even uh, the Lake Shirley Improvement Corps that weren't participated in our call, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's it's parsing out the data, right? So it's really the devil in the details and looking at each point. Um, something that's uh, not very frequently observed, to find it disappear or reappear, to me is not significant. Uh, there's actually species that have popped up in 2018 that weren't seen for previous years. Do you call that a benefit? Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it's it, you have to be careful on how you look at those data. So yep. that's why I really concentrated on table three. If you look through the NOI, where you know I wasn't, you know, doing a full evaluation, but I did take a couple of samplings of the previous data to take a look at see what has changed. And what I really focused on is anything that had changed in frequency. I think plus or minus five. You know, so if, if your move, if you're having movement or a loss of species by five or more. Um, frequency points, then maybe that's something to consider. Um, and we can stop and look at table three if you'd like. Yeah, and like we had talked, uh, so it, it's a trend that should definitely be researched. So, right, so it's the red line that's just right. Well, in in the table, Mr. Chairman, yep. I, I think um, they've highlighted. The areas in green where we have a gain, mm -hmm. Correct. and the areas in red that that we see a as a species loss yep. or decline. Yep. You know, I'm, let's see if I can find this. Yeah. And, uh, so anyway, we, we can talk more details about about that table, but just for an example, um, 
part way down down the table flat stem pond weed you know that showed up new in 2018 I wouldn't call that you know I, so you get 68 points over how many acres of the lake you know it does not necessarily represent the entire lake yeah. um, same thing with a loss you know one or two losses since 2006 what I would really focus on is the, the loss of non-native species which uh, Eurasian water milfoil was was good and then uh, the European naiad which had come in it seemed like it, it has grown and I've seen that in other lakes other lakes that haven't done uh, hasn't performed a herbicide treatment or anything else it is just an aggressive species that's what makes something uh, non-native and, and aggressive is they outcompete the native assemblage so it's not it's not uh, uncommon to see an increase over time and and that's what the whole management program is about is to try to and not eliminate but to knock back that growth and maybe you're not able to really control the the growth but maybe you're retarding that growth for some period of time okay. um, the one thing that I will point out that I was a little concerned with on the flip side mm -hmm. is there was a significant loss, in my words, significant, and I haven't done the statistics, but is the Robin's Pondweed. Mm -hmm. And that is a, a beneficial native plant. Um, I've talked to several people uh, about this, the other surveyors, um, the, the consultant prior that did the lake surveys from 2002, I think, to 2012. Mm -hmm. uh, and. Uh, he didn't really have an explanation of that drop-off, nor did Dominic from uh, what was Aquatic Control Technology, now Solitude. Uh, Solitude. Um, so it's not really explained because Robin's Pondweed is generally resistant to the herbicide that they're applying. Yeah. So something else could be going on, and it could be that it is getting out-competed by fan wart or something else. So. You know, this report does not, I acknowledge that this report does not go through the, those details, but it's something that I've discussed with the Lake Shirley Improvement Corps that perhaps the annual reports can be improved to do a more detailed survey and to look at point by point what could be going on and looking at past data. Okay. Um, so I, I hope, hopefully that will address that concern. Um, okay. Again, just to make sure that there's something in there, because it is a concerning trend, because it, it has been dropping since 2006. We gain one, we mm -hmm. lose two, we gain one, we lose two. You know what I mean? We started at 2006 with it looks like 26 total observed species. 2018 or 14 right so again it's important it's, for a biologist to take a look at those data because yeah. there are even some native species that aren't really habitat significant yep. a duckweed is a perfect example there's there's giant duckweed and duckweed and those have disappeared yep. I'm thankful that they disappeared. You know, they're usually in indicative of high nitrogen conditions. So the fact that they've disappeared is possibly a good thing. Okay. So uh, again, it's, it really takes someone of, of great experience to take a look at, at these data and, and make that conclusion. Okay. Um, uh, one of the things that you brought out in the NLI that I thought was interesting, maybe you can expand on a little bit, is um, just the people who are, are identifying the species when they do the surveys. Mm -hmm. I think you mentioned that you know uh, some species have some subspecies that people may identify in one survey and then in the next survey we have fewer species because the subspecies weren't I I identified yes. separately. Yes. So Potamageton, which is the common name, is pondweed, right? So everyone likes to call every single plant out there pondweed, but there actually is, pondweed is for the genus Potamageton. I think there's like 68 or 60 some odd species within that, that genus, and they're very difficult, especially when you get the fine leaf. They're very difficult to identify to that species level. Often you need both the floating, the floating leaf, if it has it, you need to look at the fruits, uh, and that's very specific for certain times of year. Portamagetan crispus, which is the non-native pondweed plant, which is the bad one, that comes up in, in, um, around Memorial Day and it's gone by July. If you're doing your survey in August, you're going to completely miss it. But that one's pretty identifiable. But the others, they're very difficult. And people either misidentify or lump them or, well, that looks like it, and don't, they don't bother taking uh, a sample back. And, 
generally speaking, that's not a problem because you're, you're, you're really just looking at, especially for an herbicide treatment, are there natives, are there non-natives? So you're looking at that gross change and not necessarily parsing the data into the individual species. So when someone goes out there and their task is to look at, hey, have we had an impact? Um, have we had a successful drawdown or have we had a successful herbicide treatment? Does that really mean that I'm going to go collect that level of detail? Because to go to that level of detail is very expensive. Mm. You're spending more time in the field, you're collecting samples, you're putting them in a bag, you're bringing them back to the lab, you're looking at them under, believe it or not, you have to look at them under a microscope many times to look at little features like stipules and nodules. and So it's very time consuming. Mm -hmm. So if you're just you have to be very careful and when you scope out a plant survey what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, if you're looking to see how many species are in this pond, I do a lot more points than 68 mm -hmm. because you're going to miss a lot. Uh, so this is a gross, when I say gross, it's not a bad term, but it's a gross representation of what's in the lake. And so to draw major conclusions off of these limited points is, is probably not uh, the right thing to do. Thank you. So I, I guess I would pose the question another way. If you came to a lake and saw you've lost 40% of the, at least from the testing points, 40% of the overall plant species, what would you, what would your first recommendation be? I would look very detailed, point by point, to okay. see what's in there. Mm -hmm. And if there's a species in the le that list that is highly beneficial or isn't maybe lumped in a pond weed or something that's very mm -hmm. easy to identify, like the Robin's pond weed, yep. even though that's a pond weed, that one's easily identifiable. Mm -hmm. And that is a, a highly beneficial plant because that can sometimes outcompete some non non natives believe it or not and we've actually used that plant in plant trans plantation experimental projects where we've removed the non native species and we've actually gone in and planted robin's pond weed with hope that that will take off and actually outcompete the non native so in that case i would look at what's missing and then if it's super important i would have a consultation with the herbicide applicator and maybe that area you wouldn't you would sequester and not and not treat that particular area with hopes that that plant would come back mm -hmm. okay. so is there some way in the application we can maybe put some discussion points on taking a, a better look at this and I mean you already said the one that Robin's pond we yes yeah maybe trying to reintroduce it in some of the areas and it may be in other parts of the lake like you said there's exactly. only 66 points but we treat those 66 points every year with testing the 66 points. So just to have right. the trend line going down right. was, was a concern to me that it really wasn't addressed. Right. Anymore, and, so. and, and, and perhaps that is a real trend. And it, 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 you know, you really have to have someone look at, mm -hmm. at each individual point and what's, what's there, what's gone. Okay. Um, I have not done that. I did that cursory okay. review, uh, yes. and that, those were the things that jumped out at me. Okay. Uh, I what? believe the, com, uh, the Lake Shirley Improvement Corps would be willing to have a different surveyor do the post-treatment, so that would be the fall, mm -hmm. and, and look at these and, and ask the same questions that you are of those data yep. and, and try to come up with some response. Okay. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, I, just, just on that point, a little bit more I guess what would what I'm thinking is what would trigger someone of your expertise to to look at a, a trend like like that and say you know what we need to do this is concerning or you know maybe this trend line isn't concerning but if you saw one that was concerning with I guess what level of loss or something would trigger you to do a more detailed look well that's a good question because again we're getting try to trying to do something quantitative of something that's very qualitative. So with biology there's extreme variability. So you have to look at um, the probability of you know something being lost due to an action item or just a natural loss. Mm -hmm. You know things come and go. Um, in this when I look through the data other than the, the pond weed um, I'm not alarmed at a few plants coming and going, but again, I would I would didn't didn't take the time to to go through and find out what five have been missing from this point to this point. Mm -hmm. And when I look at those three years of data that I've shown, it's one here, one there, one there. But none of them were really prevalent in any great quantity to begin with. Mm -hmm. So why is it rare to begin with? 
uh, that's one of the things. I mean, I, you, you talk about rare, threatened, endangered species. Sometimes things are rare because it's on its natural end of its range. So does that really warrant protection when it's just naturally, like, say there's a climate difference and, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's rare in, in this at this elevation, you know, in height, because it can't grow at higher heights. Mm -hmm. It could be rare, and so there's other things that, that just buy into it. But again, if I looked at these data, I'd be most concerned with the Robbins Pond weed disappearance, mm -hmm. but I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Would you, I'm looking at the trend line yeah. here over that period of time, just to touch screen. Sorry. Yeah. Is it there? It seems like the clearly, yeah, there clearly is a trend line there, and it seems to be consistent. And it's the same people that are doing the survey every. Has it been the same people doing no. it? different groups? Mm -hmm. So, but they're kind of correlating to each other. It, it, you're saying we should kind of disregard that and look, just look at it close, more closely, or no, not to disregard it, but to dive deeper into the details. Yeah. Right. Okay. I just didn't want to so, walk away saying to that give you a, the, the same consulting company did the plant surveys from 2002 to 2012. Do I have that correct, Joanna? I think. I think that's. And then, Bob uh, yeah, Bob Hartzell. And then, and, and, and they were doing the survey, you know, looking for an overall assessment of the lake without looking at, am I, am I trying to determine if a technique is effective or not. And then it switched over to aquatic control technologies or Solitude now. And, you know, their objective is slightly different than what Bob Hartzell and his group was doing earlier. So that's why I'm saying there's a difference. And that's what I was saying earlier. You need to be very careful and when you scope a plant survey of, of what is the intent. If you're looking for a rare species, you're gonna pepper that lake with a lot of points. If you're looking for gross changes, is this something having an impact, then you would have less, less points. And if you're looking for changes over time, you would have maybe less impact, uh, less points, but you would survey the same point over and over and again. And I think that's kind of what, what they were getting at with these 68 pre established points okay yeah, so at least from my standpoint yeah definitely meet and try to come up with a little more detail into why I think and again it's more to make sure that the lake is healthy mm -hmm. and that the overall pesticide program is not the cause of the depreciation right. or the, the decline of the native species. Yeah, I mean, that that's a, a valid point. I will tell you that cause and effect in, in biology is very difficult yeah. and you need multiple years of data. And if you were to do something statistically significant, you know, you're looking at 10 to 20 years worth of data to, to really find a trend. And then you have to factor in mm -hmm. things like climate change. And I, we're, I'm actually seeing some climate change impacts to plants this particular year. You know, I've been following Bear Hill Pond in um, Harvard, Massachusetts for the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. I do their plant surveys and they do a, a, a water level drawdown. And they're obviously interested in what the effects of that drawdown are. This past year, they usually try to get to about six feet. They only got to four and a half feet because of the right. precipitation, which you know, we can discuss about the variability of the drawdown. And that, in turn, you know, results in mixed success of that technique. But this past year, because it, even though it was, it was kind of rainy and cloudy at the beginning and then it got hot and sunny, I saw uh, an explosion of tape grass or vallisinaria and um, another a native pond weed in that lake that I have never seen before. And I was just about to, to say, oh, you, we don't, you know, we've been doing this for 10 years. We, we can lessen our monitoring program mm -hmm. and it, something different. Had nothing to do with, with what, they were, what they were doing. So, you know, it's, it's not an easy science. It's not, no, it's, not. <laughs> it's not engineering or physics where you have a formula and you plug things in. And, uh, but there are people that, that can objectively look at data and, and I'm, I'm hopeful that you can see that there at least the Lake Shirley Improvement is willing to, to go through that effort. Okay. Well, at least in, it, for this issue, I mean, it looks like 2001 or two to 2019, so mm -hmm. there is a fairly good line of data to yep. at least, again, just to satisfy our concerns that it's not the, the program itself that's causing. So what I would state, or what I would recommend to the Lake Shirley Improvement Corps and to is, is at 
to hopefully uh, approve this application and then at the next annual meeting mm -hmm. uh, or the next at the annual at the end of the first year of this treatment plan to uh, spend that year looking back at past data mm -hmm. and and looking at existing data and see if they can come up with now I don't know who who would be doing that evaluation but I'm sure um, you know they've already hired some of the best in the business Bob Hartzell and and Dr. Ken Wagner um, so there's there's there are we're lucky in this area of the country that we have a lot of specialists in this in this area Dr. Wagner is nationally recognized for probably one of the most recognized applied limnologist and phycologist in in the nation so uh, he's always a good resource all right any other questions from the Commission on question one Anybody in the public have any questions or comments on the discussion on question one so far? All right. Proceed, Wendy. All right. Uh, this one I kind of uh, lumped together. I didn't go point by point, but uh, the weed and algae control will be done at the sole discretion of Lake Shirley Improvement Corps. And then it says the narrative uh, introduction makes reference to the WRS report, which was written by Dr. Wagner, who I just mentioned. Uh, the report goes on to say, in their opinion, the proper management is being performed is in part due to the existing permit process this application removes that process uh, item b is wrs report goes on to say that they have not done any study on the condition of the habitat of lake shirley item c says there are concerns about the current management of lake shirley decrease in native plants fish kill fan wart increased algal blooms and there's no mention of how to address these concerns so what i have offered for a response is the need for weed and algae control is based on plant survey and water quality data. The Lake Shirley Improvement Corps hires a professional to conduct the plant survey who proposes a treatment program. A similar process is followed for the algae tre treatment determination, with the exception that the Lake Shirley Improvement Corps performs the sampling. Samples are analyzed by a phycologist who may or may not recommend treatment. These data are provided to the Conservation Commission. It is accurate to state that this process is not fully explained in the NOI, and we welcome the opportunity to outline this process. However, the Commission must be mindful that action may be required prior to a Commission meeting. What I mean by that is you may have evidence that an algal bloom is forming, and you folks only meet once a month they may need to take action before you guys convene your your party same thing with with an herbicide treatment mm -hmm. so as long as you're mindful of that we can come up with some type of an alert program or notification of the commission that's similar that what was done in the past years yeah and i think and we had talked quickly about that um previously the algae control or algae treatment was if needed um, just required a 72-hour notice to the conservation administrator and he was given the, the authority to uh, authorize algae treatments uh, as far as the weed treatments unfortunately we do get pushed up against the wall the last couple of years we've gotten the pre-treatment report and the request the day of the hearing so we would like to see it to at least give members a chance to review some of it so Right. That, that is a concern of ours. Yes. Mr. <coughs> Wendy, we meet twice a month. Okay, and we twice do a month. Have, and we do have emergency meetings if, if so be okay. required. Yeah, and, and we do understand that there is time of, of the essence. So okay. Uh, if Perfect. we can come up with something, because we, we do have, you know, at least up until this point, we, we do have um, reporting requirements and recommendations mm -hmm. and time frames, so, which we certainly can work around. And if you present what you're looking for, then we can tweak it with you mm -hmm. and Joanne and everybody. Okay. Uh, the, I, still explaining some of the other points in here. We did talk about, I, I referenced table three again uh, with a limited comparison over time. And I mentioned that the species do not equate to a new species or a lost species on a lake-wide basis, especially when the plant is or was found in limited location. I just talk about the more analysis. We've kind of already gone over that. Um, and we've also um, gone over my tweak or suggestion about probably avoidance of Robin's Pond weed in the future that we can discuss in a workshop with a commission member. Yep. Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes. just on item two, I, I guess 
because I don't have a lot of knowledge of, of uh, um, other municipalities that you know or, or lakes that may be treated chemically. What is in Massachusetts? What's I guess what's more typical? Do you are you typically given discretion to you know come up with a treatment plan for algae as well as herbicide application, and then do other municipalities generally just rely on on the expertise of, of um, your expertise to, to develop that plan. Uh, I, I guess where I'm going is, are, are we being too restrictive in, in causing, you know, cutting off our nose to spite our face by, by uh, uh, restricting when the application is made? So if they see a problem that could be a big problem, you know, two weeks away and they have to wait for a meeting, mm -hmm. um, I, I guess if you could speak to that, if you understand my meaning. So yes, I do, and, and certainly um, there's a wide range. Uh, but I would say for most most of the commissions, they as long they generally trust the professionals that are being hired to make those decisions, uh, and they would actually, frankly, prefer that a professional make that decision, and it's not on the commission to make that decision, mm -hmm. uh, because if you if you make a decision to not treat for an algal bloom and you end up with a cyanobacteria bloom that has the potential of re releasing toxins, you can put people's health at risk. And mm -hmm. so sometimes it's just a coordination with the health, the Board of Health and say, hey, are you all right with this consultant making this decision and everybody's, yeah, we are. Just, you know, go forth and, and rely on the consultant to make that decision. I would imagine in, in that particular situation, you probably want a mechanism built in or they would just notify me. I mean, I could be there at the drop yeah. of a dime and bang. Yeah. You know, Which is something have. to expedite, but still something I can report back to the commission. Mm -hmm. But and then in terms of the herbicide use for rooted plants, generally, you know, the commission set the conditions for the three or five year plan. Mm -hmm. and, and they come back at the end of the year to tell them what they did and what they didn't do. They don't usually submit a pre-treatment plan that gets approved. Um, Mm -hmm. The order of conditions that you have in Harvard, is that a five-year? That is a five-year. That is a five-year. Okay. Hmm. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, let's see. In addition, it is reasonable for the Conservation Commission and the Lake Shirley Improvement Corps to come to a consensus on what data should be included in the annual report and the evaluation of potential impacts can be discussed. So that was getting to the point of, um, you know, not talking about the... Uh, loss of species. Um, any conditions placed on this permit application should be scientifically based, financially achievable, and within reasonable control of the applicant. And this is where I'm stating that I would welcome a workshop with the representative of the Commission, the Lake Shirley Improvement Corps, and the certified applicator to discuss what criteria are practical. Um, before I move on to three, does anyone? Well, and it, it, so you as the professional, is this something that you can amend to the application as far as recommended data collection and data points? And We could. Okay, because I know when we were talking, you know, data by itself over one small period of time yes. isn't very useful. Mm -hmm. You're looking for continued, repeated data collection over a long period of time so then you can see trends and can try to react to those so my concern is at least in the application you have there's nothing in there mm -hmm. that is able to be followed historically and repeated year to year yep. to give you that needed trend line yep i understand so I, that uh, that I description hope. of the monitoring is a little bit weak mm -hmm. but following our workshop uh, yeah. what we decide can be, certainly be put in as an amendment or revise the noi the body of the text okay. whatever the commission prefers yeah. no. and, it, and again as you're the professional you know what your recommendations would be would be most helpful yeah. mm -hmm. as that goes forward so would we be looking to put like the phasing in of the workshops as part of the uh, NOI package. I think they're a great idea. The commission's suggested them in the past. Well, what I'm talking about is a workshop to discuss um, setting up the special order conditions for this application. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. I'm, okay, I got confused there for a second. I apologize. But yeah, that would be a great idea too. I, mm -hmm. You know, and then and then you, so we established the the reporting goals. And annually, they, they come and present. Um, it's it's not necessarily super different than what occurs now, except for uh, you would have someone actually looking more at the 
long-term trends and not just, hey, what did we do this year? Um, so that, that's kind of the, the vision that I have. Okay, probably call uh, Is it something that perhaps we can get a draft submitted? To a, work draft. On? a draft of the recommendations for the data collection and the reporting? But prior to the workshop? Yeah, we could talk about that. I, um, I didn't include anything specific with the, the plant survey, but I, I, you'll see that I get to the water quality. Okay. Yeah, again, as the professional, we would like to see it coming from in the application for us Got it. to review. Understood. Okay. Probably, uh, should, I'm probably going to call, in the meantime, call Harvard and talk to Liz okay. about the particular recommendations. Okay. You, do, um, you deal with Liz Allen, obviously. Yeah. yeah. I was going to no. offer them as a reference if you wanted to check. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I've known Liz for a million years. She's awesome. In fact, her dad lives in town. Nice guy. I will say that in the beginning, uh, they were very um, cautious, let's just say, about doing a drawdown. And uh, through the years, we have proven that changes do occur. Mm -hmm. uh, some are good, some are not so great, but uh, it's been achievable at low cost for the um, mm -hmm. Lake Association, or the com committee, I guess they call them. Uh, so it's been pretty successful for them. Yeah, it sounds. And so it, it, it sounds like the yeah, go ahead. Is it a private organization in Harvard? Or so is the it town of Harvard uh, funds their committee. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have a, a public beach, mm -hmm. and they actually have a bylaw of no herbicides. Mm -hmm. So they invested a lot of money in developing a pump station they actually physically pump water out of the lake for, the drawdown. for their drawdown. Mm -hmm. You know, there's there's financial yep. costs associated with that, and um, so then it's a town appointed committee. committee. Okay. And I don't Harvard's know if the individuals are appointed, but it is a uh, committee within the town, and they get funding from the town. Okay. And Harvard's wetlands bylaws are very similar to ours. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Second, okay. With the exception of the herbicides. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's actually in the bot. I shouldn't say it. I, don't, I just know back in the 80s. Yeah. You can talk to Liz about it. She probably know the history better than I do. Mm -hmm. But, but yeah. uh, so in terms of oh, number, oh, oh, sorry. I'm just wondering, um, with regard to specific questions, with regard to the submission here, you're suggesting we handle those in the workshop. I'm sorry, I didn't necessarily. No, no, you can ask me right now if you have specific questions. I was just yeah. saying a workshop to really develop the special order conditions because I know sometimes um, commissions might put something in. I mean, this is a kind of a unique situation with the town of Harvard is the town. So you know they have control. Mm -hmm. Lake Shirley Improvement Corps is a volunteer organization. They don't have full control of the lake. They don't have control of the watershed. They don't have control of their funding. It's whatever <coughs> they can scrounge up is, is what they can do. So the, the, there's a reluctance to put very strict criteria mm -hmm. in the special order conditions because they'll be in violation very, very easily. Uh, of the permit when, when you overly restrict them. That's not to say that they're not going to work towards your concerns, it's just they don't want it in the order of conditions because they would be in violation. Yeah. And sometimes it's because availability of volunteers, sometimes it could be because of funding, and sometimes it could be, you know, sometimes I've seen conditions that are beyond the jurisdiction of the commission. So the whole point of the workshop is to talk together and talk about the science and establish um, really scientifically based conditions that get at the, the general questions, are we harming this resource or are we benefiting them? Or if, if there's a trade-off, okay, so we got some good, we got some bad, is that okay? And that's kind of the, yeah. the workshop. Okay, specifically with regard to questions, uh, fan work floating, mm -hmm. and you, oh, I'm not sure the, the document indic indicated that uh, Essentially, you can't distribute the material within a quarter mile of portable water usage, right? That's what it said. For Dyquat? No, the, uh, Floridan? Floridane? Oh, Floridan, yeah. yeah. Yeah, sorry. Within a quarter mile, and then for no irrigation for 30 days, mm -hmm. right? Yet, there are 29 residents within 50 feet of the water. We don't know how many point wells, and that's 
still looked like it was being recommended. So it talked that the restriction is used to an, used for an intake, a direct intake to the lake. It's not through groundwater. So the water in the lake theoretically gets filtered right. before it enters any wells. So point wells, not necessarily uh, surface, surface water. Correct. But are, but are at the base, right? If someone's got a point well that's three feet down, mm -hmm. you are pulling water. Uh, you're pulling it through some soil that gets uh, sanitized. Mm -hmm. And through, if you're using pellets that. and such, the pelletized material, would that not have an effect? I'm, by the way, I'm asking only because we're looking at something similar, okay. and I would like to have the information. Yeah, you know, I would, you know, I, I like to consider myself a primary care physician, and the, the specialist or the surgeon is, is the solitude that does the aquatic herbicide. Mm -hmm. uh, so that question would probably be better meant for, for those folks. Yeah, the, the problem is they're also the people selling the material. So, and when you've got a, <laughs> you're saying, no one can irrigate the lawn for 30 days, mm -hmm. uh, but people can go immediately swimming in. You kind of say, is this really safe? So that I can answer. Okay. So the reason why you can't irrigate is most of these herbicides um, are disruptors of photosynthesis. Okay, so mm -hmm. they either lyse the cells, meaning they split the cells that are responsible for doing photosynthesis, yeah. and we know what that is, right? Right, you, of course, yes, yeah. yes. And it, that only occurs in plants. It doesn't occur in humans. So that Ooh. chemical does not impact humans directly because we don't have the cells to produce or to undergo photosynthesis. We process sugars identically the same way as a tree does. Mm -hmm. You process a lot of the same materials. And I haven't seen any, oh, well, they say it's generally, that is the, the safest material we could be using right now. I'm not so sure that there's been enough of studies to say, yeah, it's safe for people to go drink the water, or at least run some carbon filters or something like that. So and I'm I, not, I, I'm really not prepared. I'm not okay. a toxicologist. I think it, and I think point, that, actually, okay, we're I going too far. A little Let's go to the workshop. Let's do that in the yes, workshop. Yes, yes. Because yeah, I mean, there are documents. This is the GEIR that has yeah. a lot of scientific sure does. information on yeah, all of the herbicides. So maybe yeah. read up on that, and then uh, then we can have a discussion. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a that's a little bit lower level Got than it. where we're at. I think to, for right, tonight, so the, anyways. To the next one is rather easy. I think there was a suggestion to include some references directly in the NOI. You know, I've included them by. <coughs> incorporated by reference. I don't believe there's a need to include them in the NOI. If you just back yep. up with item C as far as the fish kill, the fan ward, oh, the yep. increased algal blooms. So I don't have any knowledge about the fish kill. Okay. I would like to know uh, like when it occurred, because there are natural fish kills, and there are fish kills that are uh, due to lack of dissolved oxygen. There are fish kills that are due to disease. There's a lot of reasons for fish kills, and I have no information mm -hmm. on the fish kills, so okay. I cannot comment on mm -hmm. that. All right. So unfortunately, it was reported in the spring of 2018. Okay. So, And there was not a, <coughs> anybody from Fisheries and Wildlife or DP that was contacted. Okay. You know, Joanna made several calls, but nobody ever answered or got out to the lake. And once we finally were notified in the summertime, we contacted Fisheries and Wildlife. They had no reporting of it. It was too late at that point mm -hmm. for them to go out and actually see what had happened. Yeah. So where there was, and Todd was the one that actually reported it to the commission. He's an avid fisherman out there. Yeah. So. so things that I would question, mm -hmm. you know, would be like, what age class were affected? Were all age classes affected? You know, what the size? Was one species affected or was it multiple species? You can get fish kills in the spring, believe it or not, to spawning pressure and stress um, where there's, you know, just too many trying to spawn or they had very limited resources coming out of it, maybe a tough winter or something like that. And, you know, they just expended all of their energy trying to spawn and you know, they're exhausted and, and they perish. So I can't really comment. I can just say that there's multiple reasons for one. The action of contacting Division of Fish and Wildlife is the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. It's disappointing to hear that they didn't respond promptly. Um, so perhaps even just have a mechanism in the like management plan 
for when this does occur, just mm -hmm. so we can figure out why the fish died. Mm -hmm. that, so, that's certainly was, an easy it, it condition to from, put in there. At least from what Todd was showing, I mean, he was showing little bass. So you, about this big was all you were catching the year before you were catching. Yeah, so it was mostly, well, the species I saw real deep recent were, were chain pickerel and, and uh, largemouth bass, uh, tend to be the uh, uh, older, older, larger fish are mm -hmm. the ones that, that, that died. Um, but I mean, there's an abundance of, of small fry of each species, but there's just not a lot of the, the uh, mature adults. Um, I mean, you can always request the Division of Fish and Wildlife to come out and do a fishery survey. Mm -hmm. uh, for baseline, probably would be a bad yeah. idea. Mm -hmm. So just to have a mechanism in there so that if this does happen, where they change their contact points and things like that, just to have a little more active chain. For if it does, hopefully it won't happen again. Dr. Slater did say, and then I can't find it, it's probably in my other email box, and an email back to me that based on the time of year and what he saw from the posting, he didn't think it was a spawn related. He didn't? He did not. Okay. He said it was just the timing, the timing was all wrong for oh. spawn related kill, but he couldn't, other than to say it potentially may have been an oxygen situation, but he wasn't there in time, so he couldn't do anything more specific other than to say that he felt strongly that it wasn't a spawn die off. Again, it's, it's, it's like hard to... It's know, hard to do things. if you're not there right. to at least to do it. Yeah. Okay, are uh, we good with that? Uh, fan wards, fan ward increase in algal blooms. Okay, so fan ward increase, other than s stating that um, die quad is not the best herbicide to use against fan war and the drawdown would be ineffective in controlling fan war outside of the drawdown right. zone. That's all I can really say about fan war. I'm not surprised that it increases. Mm -hmm. um, I, in Bear Hill Pond, I have mentioned that they do a drawdown. It's very effective in the drawdown zone, not effective in the, in the deeper areas. Yeah. Um, have you been involved with lakes that have used uh, chemically treated for fan mm -hmm. ward? What's been your success on in those applications? It's it's more of a again it's a a management and mm -hmm. there's some successes and and some not so great mm -hmm. um, results. Uh, it's it's variable because it all depends on when you do your treatment, how much exposure time you get right. with the with the herbicide against the plant. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of, just like anything else, there's a lot of variability. So I've seen both. Yeah. What Very would your typical, uh, uh, when would your typical application occur? Would that be a spring application? So it's just before it's starting to climb in its biomass, and mm -hmm. it's, that's pretty much the same for, mm -hmm. for most plants. And the mm -hmm. reason why you don't want to wait for it to get uh, to in a really highly dense situation because when you when you do end up killing it it can suck the oxygen out of the water right. and then you're going to have more problems right. so you want to catch it like it, it's growing it's on its way up and and here you have historical data you know where are the areas that we keep seeing it come back and come back and come back mm -hmm. it's it's pretty likely that it's going to come back to an aggressive level at, at that location mm -hmm. so you can have some predictive capability associated with that and i think that's what solitude had tried to do I think last year they went out and did a pre-survey but then there was a there was a time gap between when they did the pre-survey and when they actually did the immediate treatment mm -hmm. and they actually reduced their area for treatment because areas that they thought might have been problematic did not end up resulting to be problematic mm -hmm. and so they adjusted their their treatment area and that's how, why you saw that reduction of I forgot 72 acres down to 28 acres or something 17 like that. and 18. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So would you say the application of that herbicide for fan ward is, is much more targeted on lakes rather than uh, uh, widely dispersed because of the potential uh, um, ramifications of that, uh, you know, increased risk of algae blooms if you have a huge, uh, all that plant matter that, that so yeah, so you're you're trying to kill off the plant as soon as you know mm -hmm. earlier in the growth stage is is best. Mm -hmm. um, fan wart's a, a really tough plant. Mm -hmm. I mean, I live on a lake in Ashburnham, and we have milfoil. And I'm like, people hate it, and I'm like, be thankful. It's milfoil. It's not fan wart. Um, it's mm -hmm. tough. Mm -hmm. So and but currently, other than the, the drawdown. It, 
the Daiquat really doesn't. Not so much. It. No, it does a good job on uh, milfoil. It does a good job on the Naya. It does a decent mm -hmm. job on uh, some of the native nuisance species, yeah. the tape grass. Um, but it does some control. But if you really wanted to knock it down, you're looking at you know the whole Lake Floridone or the Clipper mm -hmm. or, or more. Um, yeah. And those two are a lot more expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I did talk to uh, Paula Bertram, who oversaw the program in Hickory Hills. Oh, yes. And they did get good control in 2017. Yep. They did it early or late spring. Yep. By the spring of the next year, they saw it back at the level it was at 2017. Now, in 2019, it's completely taken over the whole yeah. the whole uh, cove there. So yeah. I mean, the, the key to all of this unfortunately as the horse has left the barn it's really getting it at the new infestation mm -hmm. and that has already so now the best you can hope for is some management mm -hmm. and some control right. um, are you a proponent of the whole lake treatment with flirting uh that's a tough question because it'd be very specific to this to right, the situation specific. and the target yeah, which would be the fan board mm -hmm. and you know we're hearing from members of the EP, they're saying we should go the whole lake, mm -hmm. and we're concerned. Okay, that it doesn't take out just Van Ward; mm -hmm. it takes out a few others mm -hmm. along the way. You did a whole lake. You whack the vegetation pretty hard. We would probably sustain some sort of an algae boom as a result of that. Potentially. Yeah. There, there, everything's. Possible. And then, then you look at whether it's too content, and then we're looking for answers in right. terms of. Yeah, but I, again, I think this is probably getting out of uh, outside scope of that one. Because yeah. 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 you really don't have any intent Florida on treatment proposed. No, no, and it, it really is more of a financial. Mm -hmm. uh, it's three hundred thousand bucks. Yeah. yeah. Potentially for that yes. lake. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. you did say you reviewed a few of the points. Now, I know we had points that get treated annually that are primarily fan work. Yep. Are we just killing off the native plants and the plants that are susceptible to the diquat that may still be trying to compete with the fan work? Mm. And that's just allowing it to bloom more in those right. areas? I'd have to, well, I think fan work would eventually outcompete them regardless okay. of that treatment. Mm -hmm. uh, just it's so aggressive. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd have to look at the point by point data to, okay. to draw that conclusion. Because yeah. that, that was a concern of the members is, you know, the fan ward is the, is the primary plant. We're still putting the diquat in those areas, but it's not controlling the right. fan ward. It's killing off everything else that's there, and then the fan ward right. proliferates in that area. So fan ward is, I like to say, it's analogous to Phragmites. You know how difficult it is mm -hmm. to remove Phragmites, yes. and it just, regardless of what native beautiful plants you have around it, it mm -hmm. just takes over. It's over. The only, the drawdown, is in my opinion, is probably the best because it's a vegetative producer, which means its roots are susceptible to freezing, which means that area will be hopefully void of plants. And the, the drawdown also stimulates the growth of seed producers. So now you have, you've wiped out that area, something's gonna grow. So here's the thing is you're not gonna create a bathtub in this system because it, it's shallow. The, the sediments have nutrients, something is gonna grow there. The best you can do is control what grows there. So when you do a drawdown, the fan wart disappears, Something's, something is going to come in its place. And you hope that it's something preferable. You hope that it's a native, you hope that it's something maybe that's low growing, that doesn't top out at the surface. So what I've seen in, in Bear Hill Pond is you had a switch switch from fan wart and milfoil in the drawdown zone to even a, a non-native naiad, um, cara, which is a macroalga, um, nitella, and even though those can be nuisance, they were preferable because they created a nice, they don't grow very tall, and they created a nice blanket, so they provided the shelter and the structure needed for um, for other in, amphibians and, and fish and everything else. Even some non-natives can be beneficial. So a quick question where you brought up the, the seed producers. Is it something that it may be beneficial to introduce the seed during the drawdown? I 
there's mixed uh, results with introducing plants, both physically planting them and the seeds. The biology does a pretty good job on its own. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, it, it just sounded like you're, you're starting from a clean slate after right. the drawdown. So it won't take long for that to be hoping filled. the seeds start without the fan ward intruding in. Right, there, so. right. Well, if you continually do the drawdown, then the fan ward won't sustain itself in that drawdown zone. But again, right. it's only effective to the, they're proposing a six foot drawdown. So hopefully you don't see fan ward in six feet, but seven or eight feet, and it loves to grow deep. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can see it in 15 feet of water, and if it's really clear, you can probably get to 18 feet. Uh, and that's the problem. Your only mechanism at that point is mechanical harvesting, which is like mowing the lawn, and all you're doing is cutting the plant, and you're Fragment. spreading the plant because it can grow by each little fragment can start a new plant. So you have very limited uh, techniques, and you know one of the comments is is always like, well, we'd like a review of all the the comments. Well, the, our review of all the techniques. It's, this is not like information technology like it's not iPhone comes out something new comes out the only thing new that I've seen in my career has been new herbicides um, maybe some biological controls we've, we've we had very limited success with uh, so very and this is dated 2004 and, and the, other than the herbicides changing I don't think there's many techniques that could be added to this book uh, so it's important to understand that uh, you know, fan ward, and when you get out into the deeper area, you're limited into, into which techniques you can use. You can dredge. You know, dredging is probably the one thing that would bring this lake back to where it was. Or, if you really wanted to get creative, you, pu you pull the dam and you, and you move the people and, and you let it go back to what it used to be. I mean, th that's the problem, is we've manipulated this environment. So there is a response, and, and things have changed because we've manipulated this environment. So the best you can do is try to now control. And that takes, just like anything else, it takes energy, it takes time, it takes money. Mm -hmm to maintain the course. Right. Yeah. I mean, every lake Nature wants Nature didn't put it there, exactly. unfortunately. So. And, they, and they do do that, to pull out dams. Oh, yeah. There's one right, right over off of 117. I'm There's not suggesting, just for the record, oh, yeah. I'm not I'm suggesting not, it. Yeah, but I mean, what I'm saying, is. when you're talking full restoration, <coughs> mm -hmm. that's full restoration. Right. Dredging, yeah. full restoration. What was the name of the pond? Bartlett Pond. Bartlett Pond, yes. Yeah. 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 Even, even when we've gone so far as to the cove, the boat cove, we dammed it up, we drained it, we yeah. bulldozed it, and guess what? In two years, it's back. Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, this is a tough dog to, yeah. to kill. Mm -hmm. yep. I've, I've actually seen fan water growing in deep sections of the Charles River. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Way up in the St. Lawrence and it's growing all on the banks. Mm -hmm. Way up in Canada. Uh, so the, the, the drawdown that you mentioned about six feet. Have you sent a copy of this NOI and any drawdown strategy to Dr. Slater over fishing? Game? <laughs> I did Caleb send it to, to the fishing game. Uh, I can't remember. I got the, the the person's name off the internet. It was like the um, chief of... Yeah, they usually refer to Caleb Slater. Okay. Caleb Slater. Um, good luck. He's a bear. Yeah. So hopefully he'll be good. Yeah, I know. I know there's controversy over drawdowns. So I've, I've heard about that. Um, well, I mean, they've got a guy reviewing it for Fish and Game who just told me outright he doesn't like drawdown at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. Well, and if he could eliminate it, he would. That's I mean, generally their position. But there's also new studies. There's, um, I can't remember the, the gentleman's name, but there's a number of uh, folks that are working on their masters out at UMass, and they're going around lakes that have drawdown, and they're comparing mm -hmm. uh, lakes with and without drawdown to see if there's any fisheries impact. Those data haven't, I think there's some preliminary data published, and uh, what they have found, again, it's not in peer-reviewed literature yet, it's just like their thesis or whatever, but, uh, and talking with folks, what they have found is there's more detrimental impact by the shoreline and uh, just management of that shoreline by removing snags and, you know, basically developing the shoreline there, than there ever was to, to the drawdown. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, yeah actually... Dr. Slater was one of those people leading the charge on that study, and he was hoping for the opposite result. <laughs> yeah. And I know this because he just, he wasn't shy about telling me how he felt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. well. He cited it to us as well. Yeah. Go, go see the UMass studies. Oh, yeah, Where yeah. are they out? Where are they? Uh, there's a couple of them that are available yeah. online. Yeah, but, you know, they're slowly collecting data. In fact, we requested them to come take a look at 
Bear Hill Pond because we have 10 years worth of data. Um, the pre drawdown data, um, it's sparse, you know, because you're talking years ago, 90s. But yeah, but it's always good if you have a success story that you have the data to back it up. It's always yeah. good to use that as a model, which is why I'm interested in seeing what's going on. So, yeah, I mean, like we spoke, right? Uh, you can find someone pro and against just about you anything out anything there. Anything with numbers, yeah. yeah. Yep. So. Mm -hmm. Without a doubt. So, um, and so the other concern was increased algae blooms. And we started with one big one way back in 2006, and then we had a couple of years, and we had one, and a couple of years we had one, and we had one, and we had one. Yep. So. so increased al algal blooms. Now we're talking a completely different mechanism. Mm -hmm. So a rooted plant it gets its most new rooted plants get their nutrients from the sediments, and so you're relying on that. Uh, algal algal blooms or algae is fueled by phosphorus, so it's fueled by nutrients in the water column. Where does this phosphorus come from? Well, it comes from everywhere. There's phosphorus everywhere and when you pave the surface uh, all that phosphorus from the environment accumulates on a paved surface and then it gets washed out with storm water and guess what we were always worried about flooding so we redirect water where to detention basins or lakes and ponds so our systems are designed to take water from the watershed as quickly as possible and bring it to the lake well, that's great for flooding, but that's a problem for the nutrients and it's a problem for the, for the lake. Because what happens is those nutrients sit there and under beautiful, warm, sunny days, if that, there, there's enough dissolved phosphorus in that lake and there's, there's resting algae just waiting for that perfect time, they will come up and they will bloom and that's why you'd have an algal bloom. Why there is an increase? You know, I've seen increases just because um, the phosphorus loading is increased through the lake, mm -hmm. uh, internal loading. So lakes, once they have a store of phosphorus, they can, the phosphorus tends to get sequestered in the sediment and it mm -hmm. binds to iron. But under anox uh, anoxic conditions or conditions where there's no oxygen, which is very common at the bottom layer, that iron releases that phosphorus and now that phosphorus has become available for the, mm -hmm. um, the algae. Dr. Wagner's report covers that pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, majority of the phosphorus coming into this lake comes from the main tributary. Mm -hmm. uh, and so getting back to some of the things that the Lake Shirley Improvement Corps cannot control, that is one of them. They cannot control the water that comes into the lake. So the best they can do is, is, is treat the symptom and not the cause. Mm -hmm. And so with the, the copper treatment or the peroxide treatment, they are looking to treat the symptom, not the cause. Mm -hmm. And this is preferable because we don't want to just ignore a bloom Correct. because they have potential health impacts to animals mm -hmm. and, and humans. So increase in, in algal productivity, the data probably do show that there's been an increase. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, Wendy, you got a phosphorus cycle that occurs in the fall and the winter and churns it, pulls it back up. Mm -hmm. And that's why we want drawdown so hard because we know we can pull a pile of that, uh, the phosphorus material sitting towards the top end and drawing that off. And that's, that's the sensitivity to saying, hey, you got to be shut down by the end of January when this, you could be pulling a pile more phosphorus out of that, out of that by extending it a little bit longer. Yeah. So, I know I understand there's an impact. Right. And right. plus, if you extend it along, it gives it a longer chance. You're trying to desiccate the soil around the lake, mm -hmm. the end of the, the side of the lake. You want it to. You want the muck to dry out, blow away. Therefore, it will not support any kind of growth. Fanwort doesn't grow in sand. Right. Generally, generally, and so the longer we can have a drawdown cycle, if we can start a little earlier. And, and the more you're drying you're going to get out and the more effect you're going to have on fan wart. And uh, so there's the keen interest in or pushing. Or physically removing it as well. Yeah, yeah. scraping it off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're really into that too. Yeah, but unfortunately the end of your drawdown is more determined by your ability to refill. Refill, refill. Right. refill so. right. And the yeah. last thing you want is a partially filled lake going into the yes. summer. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. So that's, and I, that's but I don't believe the Lake Shirley Improvement Corps had, had any problems with, with, their, with the yeah. refill. So yeah. they've been they've been they have 25 square miles of watershed. Yeah. It's wonderful. Yep. Yeah. But that also means that you'll have good years and bad years depending on the inflow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome.
Um, again, I, you know, question three is just a request for the reference. I didn't put them in there because as you can see, some of my references are, are huge. Uh, they are available online if, and, and if anyone wants a particular copy of it, I'd be happy to pull it offline and send it to you. Um, the drawdown request has no data showing that activity is or has been effective. The only data shown actually downplays the effectiveness of the drawdown. There is no description of how the drawdown level will be determined, monitored, and data gathered. There is no plan for communication of dam operations. There is no emergency action, action plan for the valve failure. Um, Drawdown is only affected, as I mentioned before, for the exposed area, perhaps another foot due to ice movement. Uh, it is true that no specific data are included in this application. That is a valid statement. But the evaluation can be c conducted once the water depth information for each survey point is provided by the consultants that have done those plant surveys um, in the past. At a minimum, an evaluation is proposed for the annual report. So again, it's not in the NOI, but this is one of the things that we can discuss in the workshop mm -hmm. of having that person look at the plant data and if they can get the water depth that's associated with each of those points, they can segregate the points that are less than six feet and points that are greater than six feet. So you can kind of see what shifts are potentially impacted by the drawdown versus the herbicide. Uh, the drawdown level depends on precipitation and water inflow. The maximum depth proposed is six feet. Drawdown is monitored by the Lake Shirley Improvement Corps and records are kept to ensure compliance with the FGEIR. FGER is this monster um, mm -hmm. of a report. A uh, link to the last report was provided in, in, the, um, in the NOI and was mentioned in the recommended plan discussion. Um, but certainly that's something that we could spell out how they conduct the drawdown. Okay. Um, the most recent dam inspection report is provided on the uh, Lake Shirley Improvement Corps <coughs> website and can be provided to the Commission. The emergency, emergency action plan was updated by Stantec Consulting Services Inc. on February uh, 2014. The emergency action plan is the responsibility of the town. The Lake Shirley Improvement Corps notifies the town if there are any issues with the control structure during drawdown. Okay. And were there any safety issues that would cause the need for the drawdown as far as the dam is concerned? In the, um, report? in the report, I did not. They talked about, you know, I, I didn't read it for that. Mm -hmm. For that, They said that the outlet structures, that they had problems with um, the opening, but that, but that was fixed. And then the report went on to talk about um, other structures of the dam that weren't of significance to me, so I really didn't. Okay, I, I just know there were, there were issues with the drawdown, and my concern was where it had been historical that it was done in part because of the dam safety. So that, that's what generated the question. I see. So, and I couldn't find any reason that the dam had that the drawdown had to occur for safety reasons. I just wanted to verify that the drawdown. It could be. I, I again. I'd, I'd is, have to really. Is there any safety reason that the, the dam won't hold if they don't do the drawdown? So if the lake stays at full level all winter, dam safety is not concerned about that. No. Okay. Uh, dam safety um, statewide is a three foot drawdown yearly. Um, I think it's more safety for dogs. Um, and home repairs, walls, mm -hmm. with the ice okay. flying across. Yeah, well, but, and, and again, and um, DEP had weighed in on this last year. So there's two reasons for the drawdown. One would be safety of the dam, mm -hmm. and the second would be weed management. Unfortunately, they don't really review the docks or home management or things like that. I mean, I could speculate and say because the watershed is so large that they don't want excessive loading on the dam mm -hmm. during the winter because yep. you get the ice flows mm -hmm. that can really jam up the um, spillway. Yep. Um, but but th there's, that's, there's nothing that's in the speculation. Okay. Yeah. That actually was the first year that the DEP weighed in mm -hmm. and said it's supposed to be closed by December 1st. Yep. Um, because they feel, and, and even to um, Member Rabbit's comment about when you start your drawdown, the goal is that you're down by first frost. Mm -hmm. That's the key is the frost. Yeah. So, you know, if, if you don't need to start in August, you just need to make sure you get down by the time you get your first frost. Mm -hmm. um, the issue last year, when we had the conversation, we never had an ice freeze till the first of January. <coughs> we never 
have that, that initial please. Mm -hmm. So we were asking that we can keep drawing down until we get that first freeze and we'll shut it down immediately. Mm -hmm. Because their safety issue is, and Steve, correct me if I'm wrong, ice freezes and layers. Pockets. Pockets, and mm -hmm. then it rains, and then it freezes. Yeah. And, and for safety, people walking on that fall through those pockets. So the goal of, of, of the drawdown for weeds is that you need that first frost. Mm -hmm. Once you get the first frost, it's done what it's going to do. So that's why by December 1st, they're saying, you know, stop your drawdown because you've got your first frost. Right, and what happened was we had all that rain, like right. 11 right. inches in November. Right. Right. So right. DEP extended it to the 31st, but after the 31st, they made everybody shut down mm -hmm. because what DEP told us was that after that date there was going to be no meaningful benefit weed control wise mm -hmm. to drawing down any further mm -hmm. so both hickory hills and lake shirley were cut were shut off right around 19 inches mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and if I, if I remember correctly it started filling up again right away yeah because it just didn't stop raining until right. like may yeah, yeah. I it really it didn't stop raining until like may it was crazy yeah, so my concern is just if we were issuing an order to close the dam based on the order conditions but there was a safety concern for the dam. Okay. I didn't want to be sell, telling the DPW you have to close the dam when there is another entity in the state that says, well, this dam needs to come down to a certain level. Okay. So that, yeah, the, I, and that would have been dam safety. So yeah, I just, I can't speak I just to want that. to clarify Thank that there's you. no reason that you know, dam safety would have said that, no, you can't close the dam. So that was right. And if something does, while we're doing this, if something does crop up that dam safety should be alerted to, mm -hmm. that would need to be included, that should be included in the NOI. Because at that point, if we have another situation like this and there is a safety issue, the state's not gonna come back on us again and say, well, you gotta shut down December 31st because your order conditions is for weed control only. Mm -hmm. That's what they hung their hats on. Mm -hmm. The order of conditions and the notice of intent was for weed control only. There were no safety issues. Okay, we can look into that, and then maybe that's an item that we could yeah. talk about in the workshop and then include as a special condition that you guys note, note, note that. Or, yeah. or so Again, just so it. we're not yeah, saying close the dam when we don't want it yep. because nope. it has to come down a certain level. So. Yeah, no one wants to have that responsibility no. when it comes to dam safety. <coughs> All right, item on number A, or letter A, the data table provided shows drawdown is effective for fan warp, but fan warp continues to spread. Uh, again, this goes back to drawdown is only effective for the exposed areas, perhaps another foot. Any fan warp present outside, this wouldn't have any effect on it. Um, the data table shows pond weed growth is increased by the drawdown, resulting in more chemical treatments. Uh, my response to that is analysis of the plant species within and outside the drawdown zone is required to draw this conclusion. The information was not available at the time of the preparation of the NOI, and hopefully by next year you you will have. Because uh, I've asked for those data, and yeah. it's been slow in getting those data. Do we get moving? Okay. Oh, no, it's my son. Got to take. Oh, okay. Just, Sorry. I don't yeah. mean to prolong this, no but yeah, I just want to make sure that you, your issues are all covered. Yeah. Um, Yep. Yeah, and my concern so was actually the table that you yeah, gave yeah, us yeah, was just a generic, generic table, generic. which said it works for fan work. Yep. It makes this problem worse and doesn't work for anything else. Right. So is the drawdown, are we better off to perhaps treat the fan work in the drawdown zone? And that would eliminate needing to treat more pond weed things that are, are increased by the Well, I'm assuming so when, you, when, you see, when you said pond weed to me that that has a very specific definition definition so perhaps that's something we can talk about yeah well, again, again it just was table four was oh yeah yeah okay yeah some increase so the, yes. the, the increases ones are the ones that are more like seed producers um, mm -hmm. and I think you're probably referring to the naiad on there, the bushy pond weed yes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so that's Which the is one we're treating for, right? it is yeah. uh, but that's also something that uh, I've seen in other lakes that hasn't that's come in and really hasn't been problematic okay I have not like I, I have not performed perform the survey in Lake Shirley so I can't comment on that okay. it's it's best that um, you know whoever does the survey it's a concern mm -hmm. and and should be addressed okay so it's something we can add in there as a concern yeah I mean to, I mean just again just from looking at the, the table 
right. uh, we're, we're, we're gaining here, but yep. we're losing here, and we're losing here, yeah. so are we, are we losing it, It's a trade-off, and so. you have to figure out yeah. so. everything has a consequence, and mm -hmm. are you willing to live with that consequence, good or bad? Yeah, yeah. so there should just should be you know some definition of you know, what our target is and how we're going to achieve it okay, so. outside of just this, the, the common, the, um, the generic table. Yeah, I, I think that could be... Um, specifically in terms of data collection that could be addressed in the okay. annual report. Okay. Um, okay, so the last point, if if I may move on. Please. Yes? Okay. <laughs> um, and the only other thing, and unfortunately you probably can't address it, was I did review back and when we were here in 2015, DEP specifically questioned the drawdown yep. effectiveness. I don't know if you were able to go back and see, read their comments. I did not go okay. back and read their comments. Okay. You know, I'm not surprised. You know, drawdown has got a lot of attention re recently mm -hmm. because there's been, you know, there's limited data in, in the GEIR. Yep. Um, it talks a lot about the plant species but doesn't talk about, you know, real data. I mean, it's kind of on both sides in here. Um, and mm -hmm. It's just a such a variable technique because it's weather dependent. Yes. Yep. But I, I did speak with because I know that I came up about filing for this one live, so I called Mr. Um, Slater, Dr. Yep. Slater, mm -hmm. and I also spoke with Dr. Slater's boss, James, or something, his name's not the okay. last name coming in. But he said the difference between why that was annoying and um, Lake Shirley probably would not be a problem is because this is something we've been doing since 2003. Mm -hmm. We've been going down to six feet, four feet, five feet since 2003 yep. without fish kill, without any, so they don't foresee all us having any issue or then we've been reviewing the drawdown because it's never been an issue since we've been doing it since right. 2003. And what they were listening to was a new method, I believe, um, that if we will be going down further or something, that this wasn't something they were doing year over year, it was a new. Yep. Yeah. Well, actually, they've been doing three, and they went to four. Okay. And he was against going from three to four. So, yeah. and and we still, in turn, conditioned it and allowed it. So it's not. And I did invite both of them to tour. Mm -hmm. Make sure. Okay. Um, we would put them on a boat, or you know, they had another boat. But I did ask them to come to an extension of Lake Shore. Did they come? The yeah. GEIR does allow bounded <coughs> waters to have a little bit of wiggle room versus something that was naturally occurring. And we've, your lake at one point did a nine foot drawdown. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you know. The dam was fixed, it did even more than that. Yeah, they did that. <laughs> <laughs> but so for years you've got a history of, we only have a history of up to uh, basically 18 inches. And then we put the siphons and it went to three foot. And now we're, we believe we're qualified <coughs> to, be successful at refilling at six, but that's about as far as we'll be able to take it. And now you get the fan, well, what do you do with the rest of it? And I think they need to be thinking about, you know, the DEP needs to rethink their whole conditions in terms of dredging. There's some sections that you really need to, especially with stormwater influence. But that's still a big cost. I know. Yeah. They get a cost of the, just the floor. But yeah, that's definitely a big cost. So. But that's what he would say. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so and as we spoke, I mean, some of it's just it's a new application, yeah. you know, for us to approve Understood. it. We'd like to see, you know, proof of success and reasonable goals moving forward for success. Mm -hmm. Understood. Yeah. So, continue. All right, so item number five, the last one, and then we can open up for any, any other questions. Almost every report to LSIC has expressed the need for continued water quality data collection and reporting. There's no plan for water quality testing. Um, in response, a water quality monitoring program is described in the proposed mon monitoring section and includes weekly water quality measurements from May through September. During periods of low clarity, water clarity monitoring will be conducted at three additional locations and weekly algal samples will be collected at three sta stations. As described in the first paragraph of the existing conditions section, the LSIC has made significant financial and volunteer time commitments to establish a volunteer monitoring group and program. Volunteer monitoring groups are difficult to establish and maintain. They also require considerable training. 
Given that the program is in its infancy, no commitments are made at this time. However, the objective is to collect a sample once per month at three stations, essentially the northern, middle, and, and south basins, mm -hmm. and if funds allow, both a top and bottom sample will be collected. Samples will be sent to a lab for total phosphorus and nitrogen. Sample frequency is ideally monthly from May to September, <coughs> essentially five months. In addition to the laboratory samples, the volunteers will collect in situ measurements of temperature, dissolved oxygen, specific conductivity, pH, and turbidity. It can take many years to establish a reliable program that produces high quality data. For this reason, the LSIC is, is not prepared to make commitments that would result in a permit violation. Um, <coughs> however, any data they do collect will be provided to the commission on an annual basis. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Chairman. With, with regard to monitoring, uh, <coughs> usually you look for escapes or something that's out of the normal, some sort of assignable cause. And I had a chance to peruse the, the data tables with regard to the pH levels. Normally lakes six, seven, maybe seven. And Lake Shirley was running that period of time close to eight. In one day it shifted from eight to 9.7. Mm -hmm. I said, wow. <laughs> that's a lot of, that's a big shift. That's 10 times mm -hmm. for every ounce. And wouldn't, wouldn't we re be looking for some sort of alarm to go off to say, what happened here? This is an assignable, it has to be an assignable cause. And if you just get that kind of a pH shift, what else did you just drag in at the same time? It, so again, this, this goes to the program is in its infancy. Yeah. Uh, and so you need a lot of the training and, and getting people to realize that you can't blindly trust a meter, right? And right. so this comes with experience. So if there's an escape, so they should go back and test again? Potentially, <laughs> but it could be the meter. Yeah. It could be a real thing. If you have hit a pocket of algae, algae, mm -hmm. uh, when, when they're um, producing oxygen, it changes the pH. Right. So uh, it can depend on the time of the day that you're sampling. There's a lot of, mm -hmm. a, a lot of variables. So that's why I, I'm cautioning mm -hmm. the requirement because you, it's a volunteer group that's gonna, it's gonna take them time to really understand the equipment, understand what they're seeing, to have that questionable eye like, ooh, this looks odd. Oh, I've been out here three years in a row and why is this? You know, that, that just takes time to, to learn. You know, I've been doing it 23 years. I, I know something's funky and I'll go back and retest. These folks don't have that luxury of experience behind them, so. Um, mm -hmm. That's the problem. So you, yeah, you might, and I even point out that in, in their data that you can see that they probably needed to let the meter stabilize. That's not a criticism to the, right. to the crew at all. Uh, that the fact that they're volunteering their time is commendable and uh, they should be encouraged and, and, and helped through the process instead of using it as a, as a, uh, a pass-fail analysis in, in the order of conditions. So. So you'd be so suge suggesting additional training. So I'm saying them. before you start conditioning this permit application, you let them get their feet on, you know, their, you, you let their process go forth and, and try to build that volunteer monitoring. I mean, there, there, there are groups that have taken five years to get a really good group established. And then, you know, if you only have two monitors, someone's on vacation and you miss one. Well, they don't want to come here at the end of the year and be dinged for missing whatever uh, when they're volunteers. You know, they're, they're doing their best. Uh, and, and that takes some time to, to really to grow. Okay. And I know we had talked about a little bit from my standpoint, I'd like to see at least a minimum level of repeatable data that a professional like you can look back on a five-year trend to see to just not have anything in place and I mean we can certainly condition it to as needed or as available but I mean we should be putting forth a program of what data is needed not just say well they're gonna kind of do what they can when they can as available I mean we're giving authorization for annual pesticide treatments mm -hmm. and you know, there has to be at least a minimum level of 
stop. So what they're testing the for, uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, all the in-situ, mm -hmm. re it's really not related so much to the, uh, to the herbicide treatment. Mm -hmm. So if you want to talk about linkage, you know, that's really the water quality parameters they're, they're looking for is more related to the algae, you know, versus the herbicide treatment. So, um, and they're already doing the minimum that would be required to, uh, I guess, look for trends or look for the potential problem of an algal boom, mm -hmm. you know, coming, coming forth. Um, again, the nitrogen and phosphorus is, the sources are, as Dr. Wagner described, coming from the watershed. So that's nice information to have, but you also have to think, what are you going to do with that information? So mm -hmm. to collect data, just to collect data and see trends, well, that might be great, but it may not be applicable to the questions or the techniques that they want to apply here or within their control. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if it's a watershed issue, they have very limited control to say, all right, we know it's coming in. I'm going to go chase it up. You know, I the... LSIC has worked with the town in the past to get grants and to do some exploratory watershed work. They did some uh, uh, best management practices, rain gardens and other things to help control. I have no reason to believe that, that those efforts would stop. I just don't believe that it should be part of the conditions for the permit. Okay. And again, going back, I mean, and I did note this, almost every report from ABS, or aquatic yep. solitude or WRS states the needs for continual testing. Correct. What are they talking? So about? they're they're t specifically to Dr. Wagner. He's trying to get at what is fueling the algal the algal growth, okay. right? And yeah. so that's again the phosphorus. Where is it coming from? And then in his report, he talks about mechanisms for controlling that phosphorus. And, and he's actually talking about putting an alum treatment, which is aluminum sulfate, at the entrance of the tributary coming into the lake. So you're controlling the, when I get go, controlling the source versus controlling the uh, the symptoms. So the Lake Shirley folks have the ability to control the symptoms with the funds that they raise to do the treatment, but they do not have the ability to control the source. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean... So at this point, you probably wouldn't recommend any further study with Wagner? No, I, I, you know, there, there's a number of, of reports out there. They're all valid. They, mm -hmm. I think what you're asking for is a comprehensive lake and watershed management plan, which is great, and I would never discourage anyone to do it, but that does not necessarily relate to the... To the, to the um, because of the Wetlands Protection Act actually says that within the reasonable control of the applicant. Mm -hmm. And I would say that developing a massive lake and watershed management plan is really not within the control because there's things outside the in-lake that are a piece of that. Okay. Now, should they get a grant and, and, and you know, have some partnership with the town, that's great, but it's not a, a priority in terms of the funding. And just to back up, I said minimal. I said nothing yeah. about a comprehensive overall yeah, yeah, management yeah. plan. But there should be some minimal testing and review in place for the data collection. And and again, you're the professional. Yep. I mean, you, if you're going to continue to work with the LSIC moving forward, I'm sure there's data collection that you would like to put in place to see that yep. will help you better manage the decisions mm -hmm. that you're going to recommend to them. So we really, other than you know a little bit of algal testing, what else would a professional be looking for? That's what I'd like to so, see in here. And again, it, we can try to word it so it's not a violation if it's not done. Right. But it's a threshold that everybody understands that we should be doing to help the professionals better manage the yep. lake. And Understood. then it's repeatable. It's something we have years and years and years, so we can go back and review trends. Yep. So it's not an overall comprehensive, it's at least a minimum right. of a plan moving forward. So what I described is what, what I would recommend. Okay. And it was actually something that Dr. Wagner also recommended, is that, is that frequency, those, those parameters. And again, I don't believe the Lake Shirley Improvement Corps has any problems with that. It's just a matter of they don't want it 
uh, like like we discussed, um, you know, to, to, to sit there and say, well, you didn't meet all your objectives, so mm -hmm. we're not going to approve you for the next year. Or, yeah. And if we have some agreed upon language that does not hold them to a pass fail. And I'm, I'm fine with fine that. With I just don't want to get five years down the road and, and have no information. Nothing. Yeah. And then all of a sudden we're re reviewing with <coughs> no real. Um, guidelines of how it worked in the past five years. Understood. So there really yep. should be some minimum that everybody has an understanding. We'll do the best we can. We all agree this is a, these are the most important points, and then perhaps have a second layer of these points would be nice as well. You know, if we get to a year like 2017 where we're treating 27 acres instead of the average 90, mm -hmm. now we definitely have a little more money in the budget, and then we can review something else. Mm -hmm. So. Certainly, that that, that would certainly help with the budget. A good too. discussion for the workshop. Yeah. So that's yeah. you know specifics like that. Definitely achievable goals mm -hmm. is what I would like to see in there, but there has to be goals. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how everybody else feels on that. Yeah. But um, personally, I feel that the as I reflect back on on the order of conditions from 2015 and our recent updates. I, I feel that maybe we've gone to the point of micro, trying to micromanage the, the management of the lake. And personally, I don't really enjoy two-hour workshops every month uh, to d discuss LSIC. No offense to anybody here. Um, but uh, I would love to see us establish maybe possibly through the workshop or uh, when we get this NOI done to get to a point where we can trust the professionals left to manage the lake, to manage it professionally, mm -hmm. and to report in a, in a regular manner to us, but to, to try and keep our, our uh, ask thoughtful questions when they report, but try and keep our fingers out of the pot. That's my personal feeling. Okay. You're getting clap back there. And a lot of that can be done with a properly designed and worded application you know, that the professional has performed right. so that everybody's on the same page of what we're going to be doing. Every mm -hmm. so. Clarity. Yes, which unfortunately, I, and that's why I'm trying to get most of the... I don't want to say it the wrong way. I'm trying to get you to do all of the work so that they know what they're supposed to be doing. We know what they're supposed to be doing, and everybody goes on their merry way. Yeah, understood. You know, I think the last set we had, unfortunately, was as generic as this, and then the commission was left to try to develop, you know, data testing and you know all of the specifics going forward. And we're not, we definitely are not educated enough to develop the plan like you could which leaves us in a position of either approving something that we aren't familiar with or having to hire our own professional to turn around and review it and come up with a plan. Right. So I think everybody would be much happier if you came up with the professional opinions on what needs to be done rather than you come up with it and then we hire somebody to turn around and review it all and go with that step. And there is some review, I know we've talked about, there is some, some need for third party review because mm -hmm. you're the general practitioner, you're not the surgeon. So I mean, right. there certainly is some need for some oversight and some review. So, But the, the more professional opinions that you can get into this, this generic notice of intent, the better off everybody is in the understandings. That's workable. So, yep. Yeah, which I think kind of goes to your point. Mm -hmm. And if we can craft it properly, then we shouldn't have to come back to it. So. All right. Uh, at this point, um, anybody, any other commissioners have any questions on the, the five points that I had laid out and sent to or had Wendy received? All right. I know we did have a, another member that was gone that had a few points. I don't know how in depth we want to get into that tonight. Or if we have any I think direction. a lot of those points would be serve us well if, if we have a workshop. Okay. As, as suggested, because mm -hmm. a lot of them are, are quite specific. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I, I would love to see when you. Hopefully, you educate us, and uh, yeah, that that would be so much better. Yes. And this is a positive step. Let's do it. What's that? Yeah, dual cost training program. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy when we go out for a training program. Anyone in the commission's welcome to join. Mm -hmm. 
I've done boat tours before. I've shown people the equipment, what I do, why I do it. Um, can I ask a question? The workshop. Yeah, actually, I'll open up to the public if anybody has any questions with what the, we presented workshop, so far. What, what are we perceiving from members of the workshop? Uh, I don't think we've really talked about that yet. So. Because we need the workshop before to afford the yeah. second, right? Second. The second. Second. Yeah. second. So we would really, because we have the drawdown and we want to get started for October 15th, I realize we're not probably going to make that date because of. Um, you know, you need to close the hearing and then you issue within 20 days. You, of well, course, we, we don't even have up. a DEP number yet. We don't have anything okay. from DEP either, so. And I, I understand that. Yeah. So I'm fully expecting a continuance until mm -hmm. the next meeting. Mm -hmm. yep. It would really be nice to meet between now and then mm -hmm. so that hopefully you'll get a DEP number and hopefully you'll get a response from Natural Heritage uh, and, and you can we can work to close the hearing at the next October uh, second. October second. Second. I mean, ideal. Ideally, that's what we would prefer to do because we don't want to uh, impede the the process of forming that drawdown. At, at this point, and I'm just speaking for myself. Yep. I mean, we've talked about quite a few different points here and clarification that we would like to see in there. Is mm -hmm. that a, something you can draft up what we've discussed tonight that. and yeah. give us some clarification on the reporting, the data collection? A little more information on the drawdown. Uh, if you do have any plans for activity of fan wart, or we can just address that separately when it comes. I sure. know that's what we did with Hickory Hills. They just filed for it individually, that one project. Yeah. Because and then we do have you know, there were mechanisms in place for reporting and data collection. You know, try to take what you consider the most important of those. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you've reviewed the. Um, Past order of conditions uh, from Lunenburg and Shirley. Because they were. For the 2015? Yes. Well, Lunenburg's was 2015. Shirley's, I think, was 2006. I have not looked at those. Okay. Because there was. Shirley had some specific items they wanted reviewed that I think they took off the, the muscle report. Yeah, maybe. Yep. We, no. had the, we had three amendments to Okay. Yeah, but so Shirley's made it. some amendments, yes. but. I mean, a lot of the reporting exactly. was the similar. Yeah, okay. Damn I can take a look at that. And algae treatments and 72 hour notifications. Yep, that'll make it easy. Make it much easier. Yes. In the meantime, I'd like and to take a look at what Harvard's doing for their order. Yeah, that's you know? yeah. Um The other thing, too, because a lot's changed since 2015 when they've passed these new regs. The DEP number, talk to whoever the DEP agent is that is reviewing because they may be waiting for Caleb Slater to weigh in until they give you, before they give you a DEP number, because that's what they did to Hickory Hills. And they may be waiting for Natural Heritage. They, well, they would, they, they've issued numbers they saying, have. get Natural Heritage okay. you know, before. But they told me outright, when we issued the order of conditions for Hickory Hills, that they would not give a DEP number until Caleb Slater had weighed in on that NOI. Now, they made it sound like that that's what they were going to be doing routinely. Not sure if it was just because of the Hickory Hills, um, but the, the impression I got in talking to Judy was that it was a routine thing with them at this point. In other words, what they used to do is they used to say, if you're going to go over three feet and draw down, we suggest you send it to Fishing Game for their review. Right. When they changed and did the ecological restoration regulations in 2015, they've changed their procedure now to you must send yeah. it to Caleb Slater before we give you a DEP number. That's the impression they left me. Okay. I will either myself or, or Joanna and we'll follow up with the DEP. Because you got to get him to, you know, weigh in on this so they can give you a number because he, you know, he was a major holdup with that last mm -hmm. drawdown that we did. And that's nothing we can, we have no control over him. No, I appreciate that. So that's something you want to watch out for. We'll, we'll make that content. Okay, I think I have copies of them. Yeah. So I, I mean, there have been times it was pretty reasonable, but it got to the point like he was so adamant on the Hickory Hills one that they basically said, if you go over, four, if the commission approves over four feet, we're coming in. So, I mean, they watch this stuff closely. Mm -hmm. Mr. Rabbit, any uh, question? And Mr. Truman, uh, in personal opinion, I have zero interest in holding up the drawdown, zero interest. And I also know 
that sometimes even the best plans and people showing up and, and think we could end up not having this fully resolved probably to November if it if it goes that way. Would it make sense then to create some sort of an order that says just just the drawdown part and push that through so we don't lose any ground, you know, we, and we get the benefit of the drawdown that we're all interested in doing. And uh, just make sure we get that part nailed down, well, and then we can continue to work and push the rest of the stuff through. Okay. Well, it, it, so there's two two steps to that. Number one, we would still need to at least hammer out the drawdown information that's missing and how we want to handle the reporting right. and the the um, the level controls and things like that, which we certainly can. Uh, we certainly need a DP number. Yeah. And we do have two meetings, we have one on the 2nd and one on the 16th. So, I mean, we do have almost a month before, because it's the 15th you start to drive Joanna? Yeah. 15th. Yeah. So, I mean, we have a month to be hammering it out. I think it's a little premature to try to split this off. Yeah, I just want to make sure we're all committed to making sure one way or another we'll get that through. We yep. just can't do, we can't do something like that with, without a DEP number. Right, I understand So it's part. impossible logistically. You're stuck with a three foot if you, if you can't right. get uh, Actually, Matt said there's no, you have to file for a drawdown. Uh, I'm not sure. You, I think you have to have an order conditions well, for really? a three foot now, too, because of the changes in regulations. I so know. that would be something. You might want to check that with yeah, the EPA. find that out. Three feet for safety. There's a state three foot for safety, anything more than three feet, not there Right. It's uncontrolled under yeah. three feet. At this point, Matt, if you can find out and get written verification either way. Yeah. That was so we'll have it for the record. So we'll Absolutely. Have it for the record, yeah. I, I mean, if, if our agent is recommending one thing, we need to have written verification that your opinion is misinterpreted. So at this mm -hmm. point, I mean, we're kind of bound by what you say. Uh, we would need to have verification either way at that. So, uh, at this point, for a workshop, do you want to just meet on the off Wednesday? For both Saturday, 28. Fine. If you want to try it, yeah. at, at this point, myself, I would open it up to all the commission members. Wednesdays work for me, too. I'll be yeah. there either way. Yeah. Off yeah. I mean, everybody's already planning on every other Wednesday anyway, so just to have it on another okay. Wednesday. Is that would Wednesday or Saturday is anything any better for you? And obviously Wednesday would probably be better for me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so if we just do it next Wednesday night, it gives me right at seven. Yeah. And at this point, Matt will just put out an agenda for this one item in case we get. Yeah, one. you're going to have to vote for a time uh, and a place for the continuance, mm -hmm. and yep. then I can put it as a general agenda item. I don't have to re-advertise. Yep, exactly. So, but that way, I just hate to have just one person. Because there are multiple opinions. It's not a problem. I will turn around and, and again open. So it's a public meeting. Well, it, or it can show up. Generally, a workshop, even when they have on Saturdays, is still a majority of members show up. So we would have to have an agenda for it, anyways. If we have a quorum, so, we have to have. If that. we have a quorum. But I don't think I thought our plan was not the whole. Yeah. Not to just do it here on TV. Mm -hmm. If it's going to be, I thought the workshop was to be a small group to get a more functional. A representative, group. right? Mm -hmm. That it was going to be maybe a member from LSI, mm -hmm. Wendy, Dominic. I'm a member of two from conservation. Mm -hmm. But if we're going to do the whole board, I mean, it's, it's a regular meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we would just have it at the Ritter. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're still working on it. I, I myself don't want to tell somebody else they can't go. Yeah. And unfortunately, we have two members that aren't here. So at, at this point, it, it's either Wednesday night or Saturday. It it just, I mean, even, even on a workshop, if you just and do like a subcommittee a, and you wind up having a quorum show up just because they're interested, it could create an OML issue. So it's safer to just post it. I'm not, I'm not talking at all. Yeah. 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 I just thought we'd get more down to a small group. Nope, totally understandable. And and perhaps if I can get something in writing beforehand, mm -hmm. maybe it's not going to take that much effort because mm -hmm. maybe you'll look at what I put together and exactly. say this looks great, yeah. and mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. we don't even have to meet. Um, yeah, I mean, it sounds like everybody that at least is here is of the same general consensus. I, I feel like I understand your concern. For yeah. And you know the information you presented, so I yeah. think we've definitely taken a big step forward in opening it up and addressing most of the question. I don't know if anybody else has, other than Jack and his 
Florida on question. <laughs> okay, yeah. and it's more silver. That's it. Yeah. So, so at this point, we'll um, I'll accept the motion to continue at this point, and we'll re meet on uh, next Wednesday night at seven. It will be the only agenda item, and we'll meet at the Ritter. So move. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? <laughs> All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Okie doke. Well, thank you very much. Thank it's you. Been very informative. I appreciate it. Thanks, everybody, for showing up. I did have a quick question, Joanna. Uh, you pulled your request for the extension. Um, are you going to record the first extension? I, Mr. Dwyer was in the room. I did not receive the full packet. Actually, I, I did mail them to you, so I don't know what happened. I have a duplicate of the last extension with me. If if you want to just, I'll have them sign it, and you can record it. That's, yeah, beautiful. Because uh, the only thing I got in the mail was the one that said you changed the... That I had to change the address. The registry usually accepts them, but you must have had one that was ornery that day. Yeah, I remember the legal meeting you said that. And right, and then I had them sign a duplicate set, and I sent it to you. I haven't got that set. Yeah, that's, yeah, I, I did a duplicate I just in case, and I figured we'll do it now. Yeah, yeah we just, and where I, we've done work on the lake, we have to have it reported. And I thought at the last meeting that we did together, mm -hmm. that it was very clear we were only going until 930. And after September 30th, we, we, we were done. We, there was no extension. We went until 930. So if there was another letter for a different time frame, I Actually, call. Solitude sent us a letter on your behalf the last week of August requesting an extension. So three years. What did they give you for I think extension? they asked for a year. Yeah. So we... we yeah, yes. Because I had Matt send it back, and unfortunately, Solitude not on the order of conditions. It would, it would have to come from you in town. But we yeah, definitely we got one from Solitude. Yeah, yeah. Because you always have a part of it, so... Yeah. But, Probably because yeah. it was on there, they have like a tickler list of all their clients. And oh. on the orders, yeah. they just automatically send it out. Oh. That's, I oh, think that's what happens. Because yeah. yeah. I'm like, no, we were very clear that September 30th was a... Uh... Because I was wondering why they did it, and then all of a sudden, like the next day, I got one for the town of Sterling. Okay. And it's like, okay, that's they're doing it automatically. That's why. Okay. Yeah. Well, but I did send a letter saying if there's any other details, I was not included, that we were sent. So what was your question? Um, just to get it recorded. Oh. Just because we've done work on the order of conditions, so it has to be extended. Have, we have to accept the extension. I agree. It's typically, it's, I mean, technically, it's not compliant. So. Okay. Perfect. So. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have to sign or stamp this for Joanna? Now? It doesn't need to be notarized, no. Okay. Joanna. Perfect. Go. And we'll bring this right down tomorrow, ma'am. Yep. Um, Sue so June will bring it right down to the street tomorrow. We'll get that all straight away. Okay, great. Thank you. Still got more. Can't go home yet. <laughs> I stole my agenda too. You keep handing it to me. <laughs> you keep handing it to me. <laughs> <laughs> You're still there. I hate this. I can't wear my glasses when I go to the computer because of the way it's pixelated. I can't read it. But I can't see anything when I look up without my glasses. So it's like I'm in that, it's the age thing. I'm now in my in between. Yeah, I have those spring loaded ones. Oh, okay. So I just go blank. Oh, really? Yeah. I can tell you this page 130. So oh, it's like oh, today. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Right, 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 right. They're going to be. I'm sure. Tomorrow. I'm sorry. I'm going to be. Yeah.
Well, they're very prompt. You see? <laughs> she leaves. You left before that, didn't Wendy leave? She did. No, she's oh. over there. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. This was yeah. one beautiful yard. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It could be in the garden doors. Just from the picture. Oh, yeah. Okay. The beautiful yeah. song. Yeah. 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 He's in uh, the Adirondacks. Is he? Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. He was thinking about reporting in, but. He's like, oh, I, I think he said the cell phone service there was. Yeah. I think the experience tells me that that's. I think you didn't listen to crickets and birds, yeah. God. I would have unplugged them. <laughs> yeah, the last time Bob, Bob called me from the Adirondacks. <laughs> Again. He yeah, said, yeah, my cell phone service went. Like, <laughs> then that was it. Yeah. I've never unplugged you. I've never called in. I know. Is it not there? Not there? there. And those butterflies make so much noise, you know. Are you doing paper? Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah. Uh, so I'm doing some violations. That's a nine page book. Uh huh. Yeah. We gave her to the answer. She was in there before. She prepares her draft for a long time. So she can have it. That's what she needs to. Yeah. Rather than go through that with this here. I think it's a good answer. Mm -hmm. Agreed. It could be fun. So she's a good bridge. All right, moving forward, we have enforcements and violations. Joel Swenson, 17 Ruth Street. Good evening. Hello. Matt, can you uh, bring us up to date on this? Essentially, um, I was given a photograph um, from someone out in the lake that showed a second dock uh, on the property and the order conditions that we have, which actually is still in effect, um, only showed one dock in existence on the property and the notice of intent didn't show a second dock. So what we need to determine is it a temporary dock that we can just do an RDA on and retroactively permit it, or do we need to do an NOI? Um, and if it's a rolling dock, we could probably go the RDA route like we do with every, everybody else and just get it retroactively permitted. That's about it. It's pretty simple. Okay, so we have an existing NOI on it now? There is an existing order of conditions. I mean, you could get a separate RDA for the dock, approve it as field change, do an amendment. I mean, there are lots of ways to do this. Okay. I probably want to keep it as simple as possible. Is there an existing dock? Yeah. It's showing up there. Okay. So the existing dock, and we just get you to update this plan with where the second dock is? Sure. Okay. And I myself, I'm good with just having it as a field change, but have it documented. I'll open it up to yeah. see. It depends, Mr. Chairman, it depends on the type of dock. Okay. Well, is, it a rolling, is it a rolling dock, like something you take in and out? Yeah. Yeah, okay, then it's that simple. Yeah. I don't have any issues with it. The, the only question then becomes how are you getting to and from the dock and what kind of a pavement are you using? Is it just walking across the grass or mulch or whatever you've got there? And are you going to activate anything to, to get back and forth with that? That's all. And that, that's your question? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I might add the question is, is it rolling? <laughs> is okay. it easy to get out? How do we get it looks back? like it was just long to me. It's grass. It's just yeah. grass. So, yeah. again, it's just very simple. Okay. Now, so if we can get it drawn in on a plan, uh, sign and date the plan when you submit it, and just a brief narrative what kind of dock it is. If it, it's coming out, it's wheeled, it's just going to be stored, where if it's going to be stored. Okay. Yeah. Honestly, that's why I sent a letter of non instead of the formal enforcement order because it was just minor, you know. Um, 
Did you want to let them borrow that plan, maybe? I mean, historic, uh, my family's owned this property since 1976, and we've had a dock there for as long as I can possibly remember. So oh, yeah. on and off as a kid. Um, well, I mean, I went through the aerial photos. Like, I, I it's a routine thing. I go through all the aerial photos to see what the history is. And, it's just, and that's what I saw back in the orthos. There's always been one dock. It's the second one that needed to be permitted. They're saying approve it as a field change, which means all you got to do is draw it and it's done. Did Just you look draw it the ortho from 2005? Hmm? 2005? The image Orth from my orthos, the orthos I have where I can definitively see only go back to like 2011. Would you like to see one from 2005? If I you have one that's a good quality, I'd love to. <clears throat> Unfortunately, at this point, it, it's not written in on the, the plan that we have. It should just be put on the plan that we have on the open file. I have one from 1997 as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it shows the same dock that's there now. Well, there's a second one there. Um, well, I mean, I can't, I can see the one that's there. <laughs> it's right here. That's the position right there. Okay. Well, then what that just shows is that there was a historical dock there and approving it as a field change is that's legit. definitely the right procedure to go here. Okay. Basically, it means you don't need to go to a public hearing. You don't need to advertise in the paper. All you need to do is draw it on, bang, goes in the file, okay. and it's documented. It's just like what we did with the first, uh, with Sean Farrow, telling him to, you know, add his stone walls. It just documents it historically so that it's always on a plan. Okay. Good. Okay, do you have a copy of the plan? Copy of the plan? <laughs> oh, okay. So, I mean, if, if you, you can't can find a, a full size copy, just come see me. Right and we'll work back off and let Matt approve it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Any question? Okay. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. So, when he draws it in, um, I can send him a confirmatory letter that everything's done? Because that's what I have to do on a field change. Yep. Okay. Yeah, well. Can we just draw on that email or do we need another email? I wasn't there. It's your call. I'm fine with it. If you want to do it right now, I'm fine with it. And then I'll just write up a letter tomorrow. All right, what's next? Um, we have to ask him for the site call. Well, I think that's the one. Yeah. Of course, we're going to one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's still just going to be drawn in as a That's good. I have never been out there, I have no idea. This just came in as a mad gun of his own for the point of the neighborhood. Oh, what's another drawing? Okay. Yeah, fine. Just drop it if you don't. Yeah, yeah, just draw it in on the dot. Okay. So that when I get to buy a bus or something, someone will remember. Someone will remember. Come on. Do we need to go by a bus over here? It's not going to happen twice. Yes. Once it's drawn in. Yeah. Who's getting hit by a bus? Apparently, Matt. Hey, Matt. Matt, we just need to pass that around so we can prove it as a field change. Yep. Yeah, she actually drew it right where it was. So she signed a date. Yep. Okay. Pretty much to scale. Yeah. Which one is it? Which one? I think that's a problem. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Is that the one Yeah. Hard to tell. Yeah. Yeah. Just a right fill. Property yeah. in the pool is where he used to this property. Um, I think he's the first house. I think. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. All right, well, what do you want, a motion? To yeah, approve a field motion. change? Motion. I would make a motion we approve the field change as noted on the plan that is signed and dated. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Right there. Okay.
All right, moving forward, maybe we have any updates on Emerald Place. No, no updates, Mr. Chair. Okay. Any updates on Shady Point? Um, actually, I'm just asking if that can be removed from the agenda because they've been compliant. Mm -hmm. As I related in the last meeting, the earthen burn has been very effective. I've had no erosion events all year despite the heavy rains. So I'd like to ask if we can remove that off the agenda now because I feel they're compliant. Okay. Based on Matt's recommendation, I'll accept the motion to remove the enforcement order on Shady Point. So moved. Second. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All right, new business. Chairman, apology. I have been a member of the Lunenburg Conservation Commission for 24 years, the last five years as chair. On May 29th, I chaired a meeting at the Ritter Building. The item on the agenda was an extension of the order of conditions issued to Lake Shirley Improvement Corp. There were between 50 to 60 residents president, present. The meeting ended and the police had to be called to clear the meeting room. I apologize to all for any part I may have played in the events that led up to the police being needed to clear the room. After 20 minutes, a police officer returned and asked us to lock the door so he could leave the scene. This resulted in an open meeting law violation, although there were five other members present and the administrator. None of us concluded that this action would be a violation. As chairman, it's my responsibility to ensure that the meeting is in compliance, and I apologize for this oversight. On July 17th, the commission, with the assistance of town council, took all steps required by law to remediate the violation. Also in response, the Board of Selectmen are scheduling training in the open meeting law with an emphasis on compliance and smaller or crowded meeting conditions. I will be attending the training session once scheduled. Moving forward, we have an APR consideration for 411 and 490 Chase Road and 780 Northfield Road. I know Matt had sent that information out. Has everybody had a chance to read it? Uh, it's basically the um, Pierce's tree farm. Oh, is that what it is? Now, does that have to go to a town meeting vote? Because there's money that the town has to expend, right? For that? We have to match like a 5% or something like that? I think the way it read, the town can appropriate and help fund the APR buyout. Okay. I don't, it's not required? At least the way I read it, it didn't look like it was required that the town expend funds okay. in this purchase. Okay. So. so what do we need? Do we need a vote to approve that? Or at least move it forward for consideration. Oh, yeah. We have no reason not to. At this point, we would either yeah. say, no, we have no reason that this should not move forward. Yes, we think it sh we it should move forward. It should move forward, or if we have considerations that perhaps the town should expend funds to help in the purchase. Mm -hmm. So I myself would I have no um, issue in the APR purchase of the the land rights. No, I think it's completely appropriate. Yep. Uh, I mean, the, the land itself now is currently in agriculture. It's a tree farm. <coughs> right. mm -hmm. So at this point, it would remain in a tree farm. Mm -hmm. There's quite a few, um, basically, there. there is a lien put on the property, a uh, conservation restriction, that it has to remain in a certain form of agriculture. Mm -hmm. um, I know it goes back and forth in the, at the time of sale. Currently, I believe the state has the first right of refusal and can dictate who purchases it. So I think one of the things that the state's trying to do is get people to purchase the land but never use the land. So they do, I believe, still have the authority to find a buyer if somebody is selling it. So it is a pretty restrictive uh, uh, process that you go through, but of course you're getting money for the, the um, consideration of that. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, basically the building rights. So, and that's in perpetuity. So, at this point, is there any other discussion on that? Yes, I'm just understanding, is it the entire farm? Is it it looked like, like it was preservation? the entire farm, yeah. So he'll still retain the rights to... He owns it. He, owns he still owns pay it. the taxes on it. He's, he's still growing trees So basically he's selling he's off the building rights right. to that property. He is limiting yeah. his ability to use the property for other purposes. 
So and in, they are in very exchange for monies yeah. from in exchange from monies from the state from the from state, the state. Yes. oh state and I think there's actually federal money involved as well. Oh, that's a good deal. I know there are quite a few properties in town. There's a lot, yeah. Most all of the big Storms farms are already in like APR. Oh, nice. So, and it, it goes through the years. They've gotten more restrictive as the years have gone on. Mm -hmm. So, so depending on when you put it in APR, you can do different things. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You know, 30 years ago, you could still change the use. You could still, you know, if there was wiggle room in it, right. break it. Yeah. At this point, they've really restricted <coughs> quite a bit. Lock so. it down. Yeah. Yeah. So there. Now, so, there is a lot of restrictions that they are putting on the property for the, the money that they're expending. Mm -hmm. the we'll trust them. Okay. Do we need a vote or anything? Or? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. At this point, uh, is, and any other questions or discussions on it? Mm -hmm. I'll accept a motion to um, respond back to the Board of Selectmen uh, in approval of the APR purchase. So moved. Second. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Okay. Six forty two rear chase road. Six forty two? I'm sorry, eight forty two. Warrant article. Um, I haven't heard anything back from all parties, and I know Bob had asked Heather about it. Okay. So I haven't heard any updates from Bob nor any updates from Heather. I can again poke them tomorrow if you like. CC me yep. and post them tomorrow morning because I thought that they were going to, Adam was going to draw it up as it needs to read because mm -hmm. we have the original Warren article, but now they want to pay the taxes and donate it so that they can get the gift. The gift tax, tax it's a, right a gift now. deduction. Yeah, it's a very good deduction. Yep. Um, so, so, but the Warren article that was approved wasn't written that way. We mm -hmm. were forgiving the tax, so unfortunately, it's a better deal for the town, but it has to be reapproved. So yes, if you can poke them, I believe last email I saw Adam Costa was gonna write it as it needs to be read. Yep, and the um, the conservation restriction for Settler Solo that mm -hmm. Bob Bowen sent, I had sent that to Adam, but I haven't heard back from it yet, and Mr. Bowen keeps poking me about it. So I sent another note to Adam asking if he's see me as well yep. on that. Because unfortunately, it's a little Greek in there when I read it. So, but it must be standard because conservation. The form that I saw that so they used looked like a standard. No, doesn't DCS, DCS form to read it anyway? So, I mean, their lawyers look at it too. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, we want to get that in place. So they read it, they approve it, they sign it a conservation restriction number. Yep. Good. Okay. Uh, revised regulation review in advance of second hearing scheduled for 10-16. I sent you guys out the uh, amended regs. Um, I did change the table of contents over, added the materials that you guys asked me to add. If you guys have anything else, let me know. Um, otherwise, I did make those changes like okay. shortly after the last meeting. Did I send out my update? I sent it to you. Did I send it to anybody else? Uh, on the vegetation. So when we had spoken last, yes, you did send it to me. I had yep. uh, brought up to the vegetation removal and replacement. So I did add a line, or I did want to add a line in there. We had limited it to just no vegetation with a 30 foot of resource area shall be damaged, extensively pruned, or removed. Uh, prior to that, I won't. I would suggest adding a line: no naturally occurring vegetation within a 100 within 100 feet of a resource area shall be removed without written approval by the commission. Okay, I can add that in. I mean, I've got it in the section that you asked me to add it that I mean, you guys agreed to. Basically, if they're in there, they would have to file an RDA or an NOI. Works for me. And I did add it. Um, this excludes installed lawns and landscaping. I can add this sentence. It'll take me 10 seconds to add the sentence and 25 minutes to correct the brush. We're trimming within 100 feet within 100 without feet? permission. Well, that seems crazy. I thought we, I thought that was ex already excluded, or we gave the 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 agent authority to grant permission for that. Yeah. So you want brush removal within a hundred foot resource area? Yeah. No, I mean, I, I, I thought we had already removal. talked about mm -hmm. about you know. Limb, limb trimming, you know, small brush. Didn't we already talk about that in in the agent? 
the administrative the determination agency. form. Yep. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I just didn't want to leave it that from 30 to 100 was just a free for all zone. They still needed to have permission to yeah. be removing. I mean, brush, I think, pruning. So this excludes a limited brush clearing, yeah. installed lawns and landscape. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, a lot well, of that stuff, I mean, if I do on the administrator's determination, it has to go to the commission for ratification before they can do anything anyway. So you guys always have a layer where you review it. Okay. Okay. And again, and just throwing it back, I mean, generally, if you're in doing brush removal and things like that, now you're changing the natural vegetation, mm -hmm. you know, you have an intent to either, you know, clear, add landscaping, do more excavating, so... I can add in, uh, this excludes minor brush clearing. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would say, I would even yeah. put the caveat in, you know, yeah. by hand. Yep. Or okay. something to that effect. You know, okay. I'm not talking about going in with a brush hog mower and mowing everything down to the 30 foot. But yep. Yep. if I mean, you're in there with loppers and you're yep. trimming some general stuff down, you know, yep. we shouldn't have to give so approval for that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You're only outside of 30 feet. Right. Yeah. All right, so excludes installed lawns, landscaping, minor brush and limb, minor brush clearing, and tree limbing, the hand by hand. Okay, I will get that to Matt. All righty, moving forward. Did you, Rich, before you move on, did, was there something about 250 Howard, or are we not talking about that? Um, actually, we had talked about 250 Howard in the executive session. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, so that was done in executive session, which we'll release after the recommendation's been publicized. Uh, old business, work at Small Town Forest, potential site visit. We were not able to meet out there with Gary Goldrip. Was he <coughs> able to come up with a date that he No, he hasn't come up with a date yet. Hmm. Okay. And now I've, I've started emailing him about trying to figure out how to do this project in um, Hollis Road. So that we get the roads repaired, we get maybe some signage. Sure. And I have talked to commissioners from the um, Lunenburg Water District. So they're aware that we would like to have access up through there. They did recommend that we still talk to Unitil about going over the power line. Mm -hmm. so. so keep moving forward on that. But where that's not natural heritage, they can do that at any time sure. of the year. That's, you know, when we did small town, that was in a uh, rare habitat species area, so that could only be done in the frozen ground. And where they're doing a, a recommended clear cut of the small areas, they, that can be done pretty much any time. So we'll keep working forward on that. Uh, forward stewardship uh, bird planning. Uh, nothing on Hollis Road conservation area, the butterflies? No, no. not right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, land acquisition proposal for 994 Northfield Road. Did you send that out to everybody? That's actually the CR. This uh, is the CR. That's the what? Oh, this is that's the other one. I, Rich, I can give an update on that if you want. Okay. okay. There was a so there was a, there was was a the yeah I did I put it in the cloud actually too. Yeah, that was on, I saw it in the cloud. But the um, land acquisition committee uh, met last week. And we, we decided that we'd come up with basically some bullet points um, on the project. All of the, I believe we, almost all the minutes that we met in executive session were released. So basically all that's public knowledge now. Um, that's going to town meeting um, as a warrant article for both the north piece and the south piece. So the, the piece um, north of Northfield Road is the piece that's gonna be conservation and the piece that's south of Northfield Road, it's a smaller piece, would be um, controlled by the Parks Commission. Um, and the, the warrant article is contingent. It needs to be voted on by the town, but funding would be contingent on the town receiving the grant. So if we didn't get the grant, and even though we got a, a positive vote at town meeting, we wouldn't, we wouldn't go through with it. Okay. Um, so I think that explains it all in that. Mm -hmm. um, the selectmen are meeting about the 
warrant articles, I believe, on October t uh, 8th. Um, so, you know, it would be nice to, to have a show of support for the warrant article by the Conservation Commission. Do we have the um, warrant article? So that's being drawn up, the warrant article? It's being drawn up. I think it's drawn up now. It'll be presented, um, I, I believe, for the first time at, at that meeting or maybe... You mean the warrant article for this? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let me just read it quick and then we can sure. vote on it. Town of Lunenburg has negotiated the purchase of approximately 318 acres of land on Northfield Road, known as Saliba property, in accordance with identified priorities of the town's open space and recreation plan. The 259-acre portion of the Saliba property located on the north side of Northfield Road with frontage also on New West Townsend Road and Howard Street is proposed to be acquired for conservation and passive recreation purposes under the care and control of the Conservation Commission for its recreational trail connectivity and accessibility, water quality, and wildlife habitat values. The remaining 59-acre portion of the Saliba property located southerly of Northfield Road is proposed to be acquired for active recreation, land banked under the care and control of the Parks Commission for further <coughs> development. The Saliba brothers originally purchased the property in 2003 as an investment for future development. The town began exploring acquisition of the property for conservation and recreation purposes in February 2019. The selectmen appointed this multi-board represented committee to negotiate the terms with Saliba brothers, which was executed on June 28, 2019. Financial terms. This opportunity comes at a tremendous value. The town has negotiated a total purchase price of $775,000 for the entire property, which is $221,900 less than the currently assessed value and $325,000 less than the recently appraised value. The owners are leveraging a significant bargain sale to the community. Furthermore, the town has applied for two separate grants through the Commonwealth of Massachusetts that would reimburse the town up to $500,000 of the purchase price. Grant award decisions are expected later this winter. Public out input. The, a warrant article to authorize this project has been submitted for consideration at November special town meeting. The warrant article seeks authorization for the full project cost acquisition plus due diligence, $782,000, and is expressly contingent on maximum available award of the state grants. Total cost to the town would therefore not exceed $282,000 after reimbursement, which works out to $887 per acre. If approved at special town meeting, closing would not occur until state grants awards are made and no later than May 15, 2020 in order to submit our reimbursement request before the June 1st deadline. We will provide more public information when the Board of Selectmen reviews the draft warrant on Tuesday, October 8th, and again when the Finance Committee reviews the warrant on Thursday, October 10th. We are also tentatively planning two public tours of the property, the first to be held on Saturday, October 19th at 10 a.m., and the second on Sunday, November 3rd, also at 10 a.m. More information will follow on those plans. Is there a recommended rally point for those two tours, Ken? Yeah, it'll be um, on Northfield Road at the property. There's just after Old Stagecoach Road before mm -hmm. the golf course. There's like a log landing area that's you know you can park a few few cars and we'll be probably okay. Be so right there. Northfield Road just before Settlers Golf Course. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. An aerial and locust map of the project are included with this committee report for your review. We hope your boards will support the effort. The Land Acquisition Committee believes it represents a thoughtful and balanced <coughs> approach to the conservation and recreation needs of the town and that it does, that it does so in a very cost-effective and value-driven manner. So that is the report from the Land Acquisition Committee, which I think has done a great job. It's a tremendous piece of property that will open up that side of town for passive recreation. It does allow a continual trail system from um, Pearl Brook and Willard Brook up in Fitchburg and Townsend all the way down to just about Route 2A in Walmart. So it does, it does have a significant advantage in connectivity to pieces of property that we own down on Route 13 and 2A 
and up in the upper levels of the northwest corner up towards the, the DCR land of the two state parks. So I would be enthusiastically in favor of this. And I, I would recommend that the commission uh, vote to send our recommendation to the select them for full approval. And that we make an effort to go to the town meeting in full support of this. Discussion? Just a quick one. Sure. The 19 acres, passive recreation. The, the 19 acres. Yeah, the, the, the two pieces. Yeah, it's like 50, 259 acres. And the other one's 60. Conservation. Oh, six and yeah. 59, 59 is parks. 59, I'm sorry. It, um, a ballpark, things like it, that. It, yeah. it, it's basically the grant allows you to, to land bank land for future use. So as it sits right now, it would be passive recreation, but it would leave any and all opportunities open for the future for any type of active So it's open to ATVs? No, no. I mean, I think that all land is yeah, I mean, we make, for conservation, we make some special requirements for snowmobiles. Right. Yeah. We don't allow ATVs on right, passive they, recreation for sure, and I don't think on town property, yeah. Yeah. the town can still control that. Yeah. I mean, I, I think the park commission could say no ATVs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I don't Just didn't want the place torn up. No, I don't think yeah. that opens it up by right Actually, to Actually, quick question. Why didn't you do a, the whole piece of property just under passive? Is there a, a grant benefit to having multi-use? There were financial constraints with the grants. There were limits, mm -hmm. and we're at the high limit of the, the conservation grant. So in order to, to make the whole project work, the owner wasn't willing to just sell the piece of land on the north side of the road. So in order to do that, we had to apply for a second grant that was a park grant. Okay, so there's two grants there's involved. Two so grants that are involved in it. So if one grant for some happenstance gets denied, mm -hmm. the whole project okay. is, is is done. Okay. Um, so both grants have to be awarded. Mm -hmm. They didn't did meet with the grant coordinators for both sets of grants mm -hmm. on the site. They took a tour of the site and they were, you know, they were happy with what they saw and felt that it definitely met the criteria for both grants. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. So, so in doing it that way, Jack, it's a better yeah for the town. Yeah, because yeah. it so sounds I mean, it, like it, it, we it, had to buy it all anyway, right. so we're going to break right. it up. So if the land just sits there and it's passive recreation, mm -hmm. it's under the care and control of the Parks Commission. That's fine. But if in the future the town decides that we need whatever a sports complex, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it 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 allows for that. That's cool. Okay. That's absolutely. And I, 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 I assume I, I, they're open to having the trails going. Yeah, and it, yeah, yeah, so definitely. Okay. Yep, we've we've met with them. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's going to need our support at town town meeting, our local support, because I think it's going to be, you know, it, it could be a tough sell to the town. And when is town meeting? Uh, it's in November. I believe it's the fifteenth. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, and we'll talk about it. A little it's either bit the more. 9th or the sixteenth. Okay. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, from a conservation standpoint, it's it's a no it's, a, it's a beautiful yeah. piece, and it does it connects Howard Street with Northfield Road, yeah. New West Townsend Road. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it has Pearl Brook running through it, and there's existing there's an existing trail system on the property. Yeah, yeah. sure. Since this town meeting, we're asking to vote on it. Would it make sense to just create a large map of all our trail systems and plunk that in there and show that? It, this is another jewel in the crowd. There'll be there'll be a lot of maps. Yeah, yeah, but, I mean, Brand, but Brandon Gibby, who's running this, is Mr. Maps. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. But I mean, to advertise all the particular pieces we've yep. got and how it's turning into something that people can walk the whole town. I'll almost just let our representative know your idea. I'll talk. I'll talk to Brandon to about it. Yeah. yeah that would be and awesome. Brandon did lead up the land the lane property yeah. Yeah. position. Yeah. So and we walked I mean, it with him. He, he does have a pretty good idea of. How to sell it, and how to get the grants, and yep. yeah. So I think he, him, with the assistance of everybody else, has done a great job. This is awesome. So, yes. so at this point, I'll accept a motion to uh, recommend full, uh, our full support to the board of selectmen at this time. So moved. Second, second. motion and a second. Any other discussion? Any discussion from the public? 
All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All right. I want to write that up and send it out. Mm -hmm. Okay. I do have to take off, John. I apologize. I'm very, very early morning. So. Okay. All right. Well, thank, thank you for coming. You, so yeah. Yeah. you didn't have a question. You were kind of quiet. Any questions no, just or comments? A lot. The whole wheat treatment program. I'm still learning. And you guys have been dealing with it for years. And it's, it's, yeah, she's great. With it. Yeah. Actually, yeah, she was, she's she's very, she was very, very, very easy to listen to. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she's very good. She knows her stuff. Together is going to be great. Mm -hmm. yeah. so done. Well. Yes, definitely. So, so and then flying out tomorrow. Then next Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, your arms are going to be awfully <laughs> tired. Let me tell you. Enjoy. <laughs> yeah. At this point, I, I still see people yeah. in the audience. We're running out of agenda items. Oh, some of them are here for certificates of compliance. Oh, okay. That's the next one on the line. <laughs> Do we have everything we need, Matt? Yeah. Um, well, hers was a hand-drawn plan for an addition from 2002. Okay. So I went out and verified the accuracy of the plan. Everything is fine. Okay. Recommend the issuance of the certificate. <coughs> Plus, you got a closing what tomorrow? Tomorrow. <laughs> 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 Well, if hey, you, you know what? If it every means, other Wednesday, <laughs> if, it, if it makes you feel, if it makes you feel any better, uh, well, by the time I'm out of here and I get home, I still got to get up at like five thirty. So. Yeah, I got to go to work tomorrow. <laughs> I'm gonna make a photocopy and okay. take the original. Could you make an extra copy for myself? Because we have to leave that at our house, and I want to bring a copy to where we're living at. Is everybody? Is that enough? Uh, Katie. 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 <laughs> I don't know if you want to consider it tonight, but Tommy Christopher dropped me off certificate of compliance for the bridge. Is it's it on, on the agenda? agenda? It's not on the agenda, okay. but I know you guys have seen it already. Yeah. Yeah. It's not on the agenda. Thank you. Good luck. I told him I'd ask. Yeah. Good luck. Uh, no. <laughs> no, I've been burned once at open meeting. I'm done. <laughs> and you folks, <laughs> what were you here for? Oh, He's oh you're all together? Yeah, he was bringing us the amended plans we asked for from the last meeting. Okay. Oh, okay. It's not on the agenda, though, Matt. What are we? Yeah. I realize that he just said he was going to come bring the plans. Okay. Okay. Oh, this is for the certificate of compliance. Yeah. Uh, so I think we will move to the yes. house, maybe rotate a little bit. If mm -hmm. you have a good eye, because we did yep. very slightly. Um, but this is all laid on rocks as a map. Okay. So what we ended up doing for the homeowner was um, requested this is the, this is the deck that's the studios instead of a, a walkway. We wanted to do the asphalt right here. And that's the charge trench And the, the situation we had was not without the uh, order conditions. So the red is what was put in? Uh, the, the red is what was put in. The black is what was proposed. Okay. The red is what was put in. Okay. So the only problem I'm seeing the, the, the black Ed ended here at the 50 foot no structure zone. And if, and if I'm looking at this right, the red goes into the 50 foot no structure zone. So that's not a structure zone, right? Driveway, the surface. However, looking at the, 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 the lost a lot of impervious here. Maybe that was outside of the. Well, is this. What is this out front here? It's just water lines. No, so lines. what happened was uh, when they did the perk, they perked on the only virgin material on this whole lot. Everything else was filled. We didn't know that. The site guy put the tank in, and because the fill it was lower, and the show decided to go off the modeling versus the high water table that it was designed off of, based off that modeling, um, which within 5% was four inches too low and there was no flexibility there. So we had to we collapsed these tanks and these are the new this is the new okay. run. That's which is not just right here with the black top. So we had this is black top here and now we have this is all black top. Yep. Mm -hmm. And all of this here. Yep. What's it gonna take to move this black top back out? Mm -hmm. 
uh, to the problem here is that I am in Chapter 11, and I have a couple that walked away from a large house two years ago, and I'm skating on thin ice before it falls into a seven. And these, this bank will not close without the uh, order conditions signed off. So is this Quicken Loans? Yeah, it's Quicken Loans. Yeah, Quicken Loans is the only organization that will not do a hold back. Yeah, between the fill and the, the issue. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put this out myself and then we can discuss it can we issue an enforcement order give a certificate of compliance turn around and issue an enforcement order that this part here has to be removed that's not something that's recorded on the deed um, but would have to be removed I mean we can give a certificate I would be I would be fine with an enforcement order to remove this part, give you a certificate of compliance, which will allow you to close. Okay. And then, but we'll still make you have to pull this piece out. And well, then what does that do with the recharge the trench? Move the, put the trench back where it was supposed to be. Because the, the reason that this ended here mm -hmm. is because this line is the 50 foot no structure. No impervious surface. And now we're into the no structure, no impervious surface. Because um, yeah. we okay. technically we would not have approved this. So you've gone and done it. Uh -huh. so unfortunately you have to take it back out. Okay. But I mean uh, that, that that's the only suggestion that I would have to alleviate the problem of yeah, a certificate of compliance. A, that's a minor thing. I mean to remove the asphalt, the grading is flat there, so mm -hmm. to remove the asphalt and no, replace put it. Put the trench the here yeah. and re green that up. I mean you can leave if you want to have a walkway to go out to the back there because this is out of the fifty, but you know, this area here. That would be my suggestion. I don't know how others feel on that. I think it's a good answer. The only um, thing I worry about mm -hmm. is that this picks up a lot of water because this all comes down this hill right here. Yep. Um, so maybe instead of loom, do we do the crushed stone so it helps slow that floor water down because every we have everything kind of pitched going down this corner and it does pick up a lot of watershed. With well, you're side. gonna have the recharge trench here, uh -huh. which is larger than what you have now. You know just increase the recharge trench around the corner to collect the water. Good. So everything within the 50, put the recharge trench, leave this little piece, then you'll still have a walkway from the driveway to get yeah. back to you. And so just put the stairs. So this was the approved recharge trench. Mm -hmm. This is your end of your pavement. Just put the recharge trench back in on the outside of the pavement and then remove the pavement. You can leave the walkway here so you can get out the back. I, I guess I wouldn't have a problem with if they need that whole area stone if they wanted to. That it won't yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But keep keep in mind within within the hundred they did they had proposed over here some some impervious that's not there now. Yeah. So I mean but, I shift and I agree. Yeah. I, I mean agree. unfortunately it's not a and my biggest problem is we wouldn't have approved it initially. Right. So mm -hmm. to turn around mm -hmm. now and allow it that, that's just that, that's my feeling. So I mean it's a minor thing that's a day's work. It's not a big deal. Okay. Yeah. As long as you're good with that. Mm -hmm. Oh, we can, as long as the commission yeah. agrees, we can issue a certificate of compliance. Matt will issue an enforcement order that 30 days to remove that, remediate right. that part there. Okay. If you just yeah. sign it. Sure. We'll just wait till we come in for the hearing on the enforcement. Oh, yeah. well, he's trying to get the bank note. Well, the, 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 the enforcement order is not listed against the deed. Yeah, just sign it. Just give us a document that says gonna, that's going to go away. That's all. He's going to get an enforcement order that has to come away. Yeah. There he is. So, yeah, well, we're going to sign the certificate of compliance. Yes, we're, right. Right. we're going to yeah, say I have that. it still from the last meeting yeah. here. Yeah. So, so okay. we'll sign a certificate of compliance so they can pass papers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We will issue an enforcement order that the black can take the original. Out. Right. Okay. So that, that cures their problem that they can still close tomorrow. That cures the nonconformity and gets it. Right. The only reason why I'm saying we've had characters it. come in and say, I didn't sign oh, that. I Where did. the hell did that one come from? No, so I'm just like, I had some people join this. That and put us, uh, uh, cloud us. Is there and you'll sign and we'll just say, this will be removed under We understand this will be uh, under yeah. enforcement. Is there any leeway? Is this right up to the maximum 
you know builds on is there any way we can pull that off in an angle just to help them when they are backing out of that garage uh, i mean you'd have to go out on site i mean you've got a foot i guess so that's why i'm saying this is 20 was, feet if it was stone mm -hmm. yeah. you could still back yeah, on it one, yeah. one reason why we we thought we had the room to push that over was when they do that snow removal and they're coming down here. Mm -hmm. You know, we were thinking if that if we had graded that, we were able to get them a lot to turn around area and yeah. put a place for this for the snow to go. Yep. Yeah. My, and myself, I, I again at the initial wouldn't have approved it. Right. Because mm -hmm. unfortunately, black stone becomes black top. Okay. So, so basically, that's in line with the existing foundation running straight down. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, so just if. I mean, we have it. We're on TV, so I'm not too concerned okay. about you saying, "Oh, we didn't talk." Yeah, I mean, I just, I'm just looking at this, thinking, mm -hmm. you know, if we kind of could we cut this over like this, or the boy of pen had it. Huh? Sure, that's what we had. So we got rid of it. one of those. Yeah, I mean, it looks like you've got four feet. Yeah, from four feet off. So wherever the offset was here with the original approved drain, mm -hmm. just start to drain right there. Shh, shh, shh. Cut it off right there. Okay, and away we go. Great. Okay. So when Matt can reference removing the existing recharge trench, repositioning it back to approved, removing the blacktop between the current recharge trench and the approved recharge trench. Okay. So you want to sign this something? Yeah. Okay. On that? Okay. No, we're going to send you a, a, an enforcement order stating okay. exactly that. Do you guys want to copy this? You want me to send Matt an electronic yes, copy? Yes. No, we definitely. Yes, if we can have a copy of this. Okay. So <coughs> I'll leave you this copy. Okay. So step one is the motion to issue a certificate of compliance on wherever we were. Yeah. 141 bills. One bill. So move. Second. 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 All those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Uh, step two, issue an enforcement order on 141 Beale Street for remediation of the uh, Recharge trench back to where its approved location was and removal of the blacktop between the existing recharge trench and the original proposed recharge trench. So moved. There's motion and a second. 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 Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All right. And Matt, you can type that up, send that out. Mm -hmm. Okay. That will alleviate that problem. It's good for you guys. It's a nice neighborhood. It's a wicked nice neighborhood. Yeah. And you get the church there so God can be your co-pilot. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to go far on Sundays to go antiquing. You just go right around the corner to Jeffrey's. There you go, Katie. Yeah, I got to put my wife in there. She loves to do oh, antique right. painting. Matt, I'm going to make copies. I want to give you an original. Okay, thank and you. And I'm going to make copies. Thank you. All right, we'll like that. Moving forward, extension permits. Extension permit for LSIC, the town of Lunenburg, has been rescinded. So there is no extension request. So their order of condition will expire September 30th. Extension permit for 101 Pleasant Street. Uh, at this point, they've done 99% of the work. We're waiting on an as-built. Uh, I would not recommend co continuing the order condition. It's been three years. At this point, he's finally started to get the work done. Um, if he doesn't finish by October 6th, we can issue an enforcement order for him to finish it up. But I am leery of continuing an order of conditions on the property. So, and they're looking to close so I believe they're looking to get an order, of con a um, certificate of compliance by October 2nd. So I think time is the essence for them, so there's no reason that we should be extending the order conditions. Okay. At this point, I'll accept the motion to deny the extension request for 101 Pleasant Street. So moved. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 So we denied 101 Pleasant. Yep. Okay. Uh, minutes approval. I don't remember seeing any minutes. I sent you all minutes a week ago. Really? Mm-hmm. 
Okay. Yes, I take it four people. Did anybody read it? I did not get a chance. To I didn't get anything from. Did Carl have any revisions? Nope. Okay. I didn't get anything. Uh, what were the dates of the minutes? Uh, it was just that one. This last one. That last, last section. Meeting. Okay. So what was that? September. September fourth. Fourth. I'll accept a motion to approve the minutes of September fourth. So moved. Second. All those in favor of the motion. Aye. 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 Okay. Doke. Committee updates. Karen, you already gave us yours. Any legal updates, Matt? Uh, no. Open space trails use. Um, yeah, I have Sunset Stables wants to do their annual ride through based on the same map that we've approved for the last like four years. So I'm asking you guys to issue an approval so I can let her get her annual ride stuff done. I'll accept the motion to approve the request by Sunshine Stables. <laughs> to use the same <coughs> map and trail system that they have in the past. So moved. And that's a one day yep. request? Second. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. Uh, aye. 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 Did you guys talk about the APR over on the Jason Yeah, Road? we can sit, we uh, recommended approval. We recommended approval. Okay. And the only other thing I have to let you guys know under legals is that I have the uh, yearly operational plans from Mass Electric in the office with the links if you guys want to review them because I know they've been doing a lot of strutting and cutting um, this year. Unitil or Mass Electric? Uh, no, it was Mass Electric. Oh. I said Mass Electric. All right, right, Hickory Hills, general updates. Uh, I'm going to be meeting at Hickory Hills tomorrow Okay. Um, to go over something about chemical treatment. I just want to find out what's going on. Um, the other thing is, um, you know, I want to talk to John more about the, uh, the dam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, about the seating? Yes. But I haven't seen any of that yet. I don't Has he said that they did it? They were supposed to. I haven't seen it. I'll talk to John about it in the morning. Their window's closing. Hey, Matt, if I could. Um, there's obviously there's a lot of discussion about fan wart at the, on the lake in terms of how we're going to proceed. Uh, they're looking at getting approval to do something similar uh, with regard to bringing an expert in to look. Is a function of funding and how do we... Right now, the lake... It, it, Public knowledge, public information is that they spent about 70 grand last year, to this year, trying to combat the fan work, and it's not moving in the right direction. So they're looking at that. One of the questions they, that came up is if you're going to try and do some treatment, how much can you treat all at one time? And, that, and I believe that for some reason, um, I was under the impression that some of the chemical treatments we limit to about a third of the lake. Is that a legal requirement or is that a DEP well, I think policy? The only one that we definitely recommend only half the treatment point. of the body water is for algae. That's actually an EPA requirement <coughs> because what? Maybe the EPA requirement on the water, they do limit the amount of surface area you can treat the chemicals and stuff. But unfortunately, yeah. I would recommend that you contact a professional applicator. Yeah. I mean, it's. That's that where it's not Matt's forte. I don't right. know. I could not find anything, any in the literature anywhere. On Matt, did you find anything at all, or no? I, no. I mean, it could be an EPA regulation. Yep. It may not be in the literature. Yep. Yeah. It may be in an EPA regulation tucked somewhere. Yeah. But I know did that you we contact the, the state because the state is the one that uh, recommends the labeling. So no, I didn't. I yeah. didn't go to the Agri Department of Agri Resources. Yeah. I did the GEIR. I did all the other, I did other literature. And uh, they got to get it from a horse's mouth. Yeah. And I, well, they went over to see Matt. Yeah. And uh, so you saying Matt's a horse? Well, he is the mouthpiece for our organization. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, <laughs> honestly, I think you should try to find a professional. Opinion, yeah. So. Yeah. Because unfortunately, if you're not somebody that's dealing with it every day, I mean, that's one of the big things. And Wendy actually yeah. pointed it out with pesticides. Oh, yeah. So it's 130 and Eventually, they update the, the listings and the label on I've got stuff to be signed. Okay. This is the yes, John so. Harrison Certificate oh. of Compliance for uh, 14 Sunset, where he revoked his own order. No, make it easy. <laughs> Anything else to sign? Yep. This is one copy of the order of conditions for Ken Trank. Okay. 320 Burridge. 
And this is the second original, because I do two originals on these. Any other comments from the commission? Any comments from the public? Boy, can we empty a room or what? A motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion. Second. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Good job. Good night. Okay, I have the uh, DOA for 21 East what? Street.